Live from Pahrump, Valley of the Dirt People, this is, I'm talking loud, mm -hmm. Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. This is the show where you get to ask me tonight. My name is Jimmy Lewis. Motorcycle, motorcycle product related questions. We will answer those to the best of our ability. We generally uh, give you what you pay for or more. It's hard, not hard to do. Or more. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, Welcome to the show. Happy that everybody's joining in. Matt, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. I uh, passed you on the flat track for the first time ever. Granted, I was on the better bike, but... Oh, wait, you thought there was a better bike on the flat track? I did. So we were doing some bike evaluation. Uh, a lot of my motorcycle evaluation takes place on a flat track when it's play bikes. You do learn a lot with those, actually, on that flat track. I can actually learn almost everything I need to learn about a, a, a play bike. And so we were riding like 250, 230 play bikes today on the flat track. And I can, because I can get the suspension to the bottom just by being an idiot on the brakes mm -hmm. or just like just bouncing on it. I can, you know, you can, you get a good feel for the power, for the throttle control, all the stuff. So yeah, I, so you, you, you deemed one of those bikes was better than the other. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's especially when it was, I had slowed up just, uh, I had slowed up and I was really coming from that bottom pulling up to the top of the power band. You know, this show is sponsored by a couple different companies, right? Yes. Okay. So I'd like to thank our sponsors, this show, Yamaha, Taco Moto, Scott sports, climb DDC trail tech, fast company, seat concepts, with the Seat Concepts Hot Seat Hotline, did you put that up in the chat yet, Matt? Yes, yes, we did. So if you have a question that you'd like to answer, have answered live, go ahead and uh, use that link. You will basically call in through that link, and then Matt will verify that you um, aren't sitting naked on your couch. If you want to bring your... You can sit naked on your couch. Uh, you just don't have... It's we're, just, we're, we're not going to see that video? You Thank won't, you. You won't yeah. pop on. I but, think most of our yeah. viewers would like that my... Uh, stream doesn't get replaced with that. Uh, C Concepts Hot Seat Hotline Bulletproof Designs. I have a Bulletproof Designs product of the week. And, of course, Double Take Mirrors. And I still need to get that country song done. If anybody out there... the guys are Some guys are working on doing this country song. I have some words for a country song. And uh, I need music to it. And then maybe somebody to sing it. I don't really know. But I need to, because I got a video that I got to get built and done. And it revolves around having this song because I wrote a song about the video. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So uh, McConnell sent his rooster endo and Victor is out there. He says, are you sponsored by Bud Light? No. No, Victor. Hold on. I'm going to show you what I'm sponsored by right now. Look at, uh, that's what's holding up. This is holding up my, uh. Instaphone, which is what Victor is watching this show on right now. So if you get cut off, you're on the Instagrams, you get cut off, switch over to our other channels. If you have a question, I might have missed it because I was uh, you know, working on doing the show. But Jeff Ballard says he runs a TTR 230 forks on a YZ and it works good. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't sound correct. I know Jeff Ballard. He used to race against that guy. He's an Australian guy that came over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, he actually... He actually took Al Baker's XRs only and turned it into Ballard's XR only down in Australia. So oh, really? that was a pretty cool thing. So um, I have some pretty cool callers coming in tonight. I want to argue with, uh, with actually one of them um, about fitness and why results don't increase with fitness at our age. I don't know. I'm coming from a point of experience because I'm a washed up ex motorcycle racer and I'm still faster than you. So. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Dave Donnelly. Well, it's warm enough to sit on your patio naked. <laughs> I don't want to know what Dave's doing right now. <laughs> Dave buys Husabergs and then tries to sell them to me. Yeah, he bought my Husaberg. He has he has a Kickstart uh, older Husaberg, like the the I, I don't know if his was a Swedish one or an Austrian one, but I saw it in the back of his truck. He couldn't get it started. I got it started, and then he said, "Hey, you want to buy it?" <laughs> nice. <laughs> so. Anyhow, uh, okay, everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, anybody have any opinions or experience with the Sherco 125 SE? Asks Soupy Socks Enduro. 
I don't. Uh, it's been a while since I've ridden a Sherco. They were never seemed to be too interested in getting us test, test bikes. They said, we're selling all of them. We don't need to get any publicity on them. So that's where I'm at with Sherco's. I have no idea. So I can't help you on that question. I'll, I, did, I did my best, though. <laughs> Someone said I should have been riding a, a Beta 350 or a KTM 350 on the flat track. I don't know about this. I don't think that would have made it better. Our, our flat track's actually pretty small. Yeah, like the bikes we were on were pretty perfect. D- for when it. I so so you, you're you're gonna say that you like the CRF 250 F? Yes. Better than the Yamaha TTR mm-hmm. 230. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily the frame. I think that was mostly with the handlebars because the two the the 230 I did like how low it kind of it felt. That I think it was mostly coming from the handlebars. Uh, but that power delivery on the 250, I was liking that a lot more because I was able to just kind of roll on the whole power band versus trying to keep it. I don't know. I felt a little bore, just, just a little. Well, it's carbureted. The, yeah, it's carbureted and it's a 230. Mm-hmm. And the I the it was funny because when we first got the Honda, when we took it out there and rode it around, it was and that's when we got the thanks Gene Woods. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, if you're Gene Woods racing experience, if you're in Vegas, unsolicited ad right here, go to one of his go-kart tracks. I would go to the electric one that's on Fremont Street and go slide those carts around. But anyway, Gene gave me a water buffalo, and I can water the track. So the track actually got bigger. It got wider because it was, it was the hardest thing to do is water it out here. And that that bike, the CRF250, was geared perfect for that track like it taps mm-hmm. the rev limiter right about the time that you're you know you're 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 wide open and you start dropping it into the turn and and it, it hits the rev limiter right when you want to back off so it actually starts sliding for you when you do this certain line and uh so that's what was really nice about that bike mm-hmm. but i was i was pretty surprised at the ttr it worked it worked really well but um, like it, it wasn't as a drastic of a difference as i thought it was going to be I power will say wise that. power wise i yeah. thought it was going to be a huge difference no and it was the yamaha's, pretty damn close yamaha's always those 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 yamaha play bikes actually always make pretty good power uh and and i, I think the biggest thing is holding it back for me was like drum brakes which we need to adjust because somebody mm. adjusted the pedals oh the brake pedal that and brake the pedal, pedal so way, far down way down and so I don't know if the drum brake is really going to be that big. You know, there you're using the rear brake quite a bit to mm-hmm. do stuff. Uh, but, but, yeah, like yeah. peppy, peppy little bike. Had, it, had, it was. Had fun. And then, you know, previous to that, we rode Yamaha WRs. Mm-hmm. I was going to make the Yamaha WR the product of the week, but I thought I want to ride it more. But mm-hmm. I was uh, – I'm actually, actually pretty stoked because – I remember when I rode the old WR, and this was back in 2019. It was the older. It was the one version back. They hadn't gone to the newer YZ chassis, mm-hmm. and and so the so basically, it went from the kick starting one to the no kick start. This is the this is the big change, and there's a lot of changes the YZ kind of took. This is where that YZ really took a leap forward, at least in the motocross world, motocross comparisons. Yeah, yeah. Started working really good. And I remember riding the the WR, and it wasn't bad. But I knew that boy, if they ever, if the, when this WR leaps to that platform, it's going to get a lot better. And unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, <laughs> our bikes were like zero miles brand new, mm-hmm. and so they weren't broken in. So what we did today was went out and shot photos, like static photos of them, mm-hmm. and just got them ready so we could ride them. And we basically started breaking in the suspension. Yeah, and right away it's like, oh yeah, these things need a couple tanks of gas through them to loosen up the suspension because they were stiff. Mm-hmm. I definitely felt that on the 450. 450 for sure because the springs are stiff. And I'm I'm a, I actually need to ask them like, is it WR specific suspension or is it did they just bring the FX stuff over, which is something that they'd been talking about doing? Mm-hmm. Is just having the FX and the WR on really similar suspension? I don't know. I have to ask, but I need to ride a little bit more i need to ride a little bit more and break it in because even just the tires tires tire pressure and we had you know we had to lower the tire pressure down to get it right but it it just felt like it needed to be they need to be broken in before i (laughs) do a lot of comments on that stuff right so we actually already have someone on the hot seat hotline so this is actually brenda she decided to come back on and she's gonna have a she has a question about starting procedures for ktm 300 okay so uh brenda go ahead you are 
live now on Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Hi, Brenda, how you doing? I'm good. Um, where where my where my female female uh, comments last week out of line? No. Oh, did you see my she mullet? Oh, okay. she mullet. No. It, well. No. <laughs> Well, yeah, she, fee, she, it was however you want to call it. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, when I started calling Ricky's mullet uh, a fee mullet, he got upset. So notice he's not here this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. But anyways, hey, how you doing? What can, how can we help you today? Okay, well, last week I told you that a friend of mine gave me a 2019 six days to try. Right. And you told me I probably would have to change the oil pump before I even wrote it. Uh, no, no, no. It was no, gonna. It, it, it was if you if you if you hook a tie down to the handlebar, generally it seizes. Oh, that was okay. Okay. That that's oh. what it was. But the oil pump's next. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so getting back to the oil pump, we got the bike loaded in the truck and it's at eye level, and we were just kind of looking it over and you can see the little tube that goes down from the oil pump to the bottom, and there must have right, been a it goes, crack. It, where, yeah, I don't know what that thing is that it plugs into. It plugs but, into the reed valve, kind okay. of, kind of right, 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 behind, right near the reed valve. Actually, I'm, I, I don't remember off the top of my head right now, but it, it's basically whatever color your your two stroke oil is. You should see it in that tube. It mm -hmm. should not have bubbles in it, and it should go, and you'll see where it goes into the brass fitting, and then it goes into the intake tract. Okay, well at that point right there, it was leaking. There was dirt everywhere, oil everywhere. The bike was absolutely like speck free of dirt, except in that one area. And we had stopped by a suspension guy's house to drop our stuff off for him to service while we were riding. And he happened to have one of those little tubes in his garage. So we were able to yank that off and fix that too before we blew the bike up. Well, <laughs> it'd be interesting to, to, if you were, were not running it under a load, okay. So, just gonna just gonna go off on a little tangent here. If you're not running under under a load, so you're not super straining the motor, then if it's pumping down in there and it's it's spilling out like the oil is coming out around that that hose, that could be problematic. But I imagine that 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 it depends on how much it was cracked and how much it's leaking. Yes, that needs to be replaced. I've never heard of that happening before. Uh, I would be interesting. So, you know, you said somebody loaned this bike to you or gave it to you. I've, I've remember Mojave Bob, that guy used to come by here all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. Well, he, I think he got abducted, abducted by aliens is usually what happens, but he, I buy a lot of his old bikes and I have to un Mojave Bob them. And every single problem that i've had with these bikes it's something he's touched so i would i would the first step would you know replace it good put a new one on there but ask the person if they actually touch it because i've never seen those hoses cracked and especially not on a bike that's so new i mean if it was one of my 22 year old ktm rfs bikes and it was a carburetor vent hose yeah it should be cracked mm -hmm. yeah but not was, on a bike that's it was weird because the bike only had when i got it it had 24 hours on it and it, it looked like it was cracked. And the guy that I got it from, he's not a mechanical guy. So he has shops do all of his work, like putting on his clutches and his tires and et cetera. So I'll ask him, right. but we just uh, didn't feel comfortable so, running it with a possible crack in it. No, that's that's probably a good thing to, to check. I mean, I'm, it's, it's smart of you to check that. That's just kind of, you know, when I'm washing a bike, I'm looking for stuff like this. I'm looking for oil like we're, we're, we're a lot of dirt's piling up on something that's oily. And it's amazing how little oil can attract a lot of dirt, you know, like, um, you know, on the, on a valve cover, for instance, just a little bit of leaking can attract and people just panic. I have Husabergs that literally seep oil. <laughs> old, uh, my, my new, my new old one, my new one, the new old one, the new old one, it was seeping so much. I popped it off and really lapped a lot of, uh, uh, you know, what do they call it? Um, it's the gray RTV stuff, the, the the flexible RTV stuff. I put a lot of that on there to seal it up, and I got it sealed up. But when it was leaking, I mean, literally drooling out of there while it was running, I'm like, I'm not worried because it takes a long time to pump out an amount that's going to be catastrophic. So, hey, Matt, do you know anybody that's not mechanical? Uh, 
<laughs> no, no one comes to mind, really. Really? Okay. Yeah, no. Got it. I mean, okay, so we're not... to the question, though. Okay. After riding the bike for 51 miles, I had to have one, so I bought two. Made the deal today. <laughs> I've got two coming up uh, as soon as the money clears my checkings account. Um, so we've been reading a lot online about these bikes, and there's like so many different opinions on starting procedure. So it's a 23300 XCW wow, yes. What is the right answer? Because every expert has the right answer. Uh, okay. So I've I've seen a couple of these. It's funny because I see them come across my YouTube feed because I watch a lot of motorcycle stuff. And, and so every once in a while I watch one. And most of these guys... Uh, I don't want to say most of them. I, some of them are really good at YouTube. Let's put it this way. Some of them understand YouTube and they, they know how to post a video that's going to get put on someone like my feed and other people's feed. And, and I watch the video and I go, that d didn't teach me anything. That video was kind of basically useless because some of them are just like quoting what the manual says. And yeah, the manual's going to tell you what you should do to a T. But I, I watched some of them that, that the, the most important thing when I looked at the core issue that the person was trying to alleviate was fouling spark plugs. And I haven't fouled a two-stoke spark plug in... Mm, well, I got my YZ125 in 2006. And I haven't fouled a spark plug since then on a two-stroke. And I have a TPI bike, and I've ridden a lot of two-strokes. Um, my YZ125 a lot. And, and so I haven't fouled a spark plug. And... When I, when I watched this one guy that was talking about the fouling spark plugs, he actually included some riding video of him riding. And I was listening to him ride. That guy never opened the power valve. His burp, 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 and, and I watched the trails he was riding. He was riding fine. I'm not going to complain about his riding. He just never revved out, never cleaned it out. And if you, if you were that guy and you hopped on, your bike and you you started started up early like they like you know he says like he says there's definitely a, a warm-up oil pump mapping which pumps a little bit extra inside there and then if you took off and rode like that and it doesn't switch over i don't know this i've never bothered to ask like what time that that uh that oil at what temperature i guess it would be or is it i don't know if it's time or temperature when it switches over to its normal mapping but I, I start mine up, I let it warm up for 20, 30 seconds, and then I take off and I ride it gently for another minute, and then and then I'm fine. I never worry about it. So if, if it's really cold outside, I might actually do a, a gratuitous check of the radiator temperature. You know, I just reach up and touch the radiator, and you're like, okay, it's warm, now I can get on it. And it, they don't run great when you first start them up. I've always known this. I've never, I've never had any issues with it. But if you if you took off and you rode like burp 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 like and you continued riding, burp, 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 you know, tell John to cut that in mm -hmm. me describing how motorcycles sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll get on a sound drop. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my drop board? There has just been so many things. Okay. We 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 have a long list. Anyway, so if you rode like that and then you kept doing that and doing that. There's just oil pooling up in a bottom end. The reason I know this is because I've pulled apart like some old men. It could be old women too. Some of these old men ride like old women. No, that's the line we're clipping. Right. <laughs> talking about talking about Bob. Bob used to ride Huskies, and I think he 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 never used first or second. He used fourth gear all the time, and just you know, so it'd go. But anyways. I pulled these things apart, and there's there's a bunch of oil pooled in the bottom end, even if they run it because they never quote clean it out. And if watch an old motocross supercross video, the start line back when they were racing two strokes, and watch these guys clean the bikes out to just get it because they they don't want any goop, whether it's fuel or oil, down there. They want it to be just 
pure, ready to go rip. And, and you know, from like, if this is, this is, I remember when we were tested the first uh, beta that went to oil injection, the interesting thing about that beta was you could lug it. You could be on a single track trail, like doing first, second, third gear lugging. And then you'd hop out on a fire road and you'd get on the gas and go, and it would get on the gas and accelerate. It wouldn't go. Bah, 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 bah. Mm-hmm. So, and there's another good sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm good at these sounds, right? Brenda, am I good at these sounds? Yeah. About as good as my niece. Okay. When we when she was uh-huh. we taught her the difference between a four stroke and a two stroke. So she could she could do the sounds for you. Ha- have her have her call up. We'll, we'll yeah. I'll I'll, 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 ra- I'll race her with sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I think it depends on how you ride and if you if you clean your bike out every once in a while and that's not a that's doesn't have to be in neutral and just cleaning it out that means just you know you you have the opportunity every once in a while to like kind of do a hill climb or you do a a, a sharp acceleration or you know something like this and this is where the oil injected bikes are generally really good I don't think I ever really have been able to lug my bike around enough to get it to where it wouldn't instantly clean out so I don't have a special startup procedure. That's this thing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to start it up with the choke on for X amount of minutes and then turn the choke off and let it idle till a certain temperature. And then I just hop on my bike. Cause one guy says you got to shut it off to reset the thing. And okay. So the interesting thing about the older ones, the older, like 2019 version is that, is that unless you shut the bike off, it doesn't take a second. Every, it, it, it only takes the, I have the to, air pressure, the air, the, the, the crank atmospheric case, pressure. The, so the crankcase pressure sensor is the only thing recording pressure on the older ones, the newer ones, the version one TPI, right. it, it only uses the crankcase pressure sensor. So when you start it up, whatever that crankcase pressure sensor, when you start it up, that's what it, it, that's your altitude and all the other stuff. And then when it's running, it's taking all the readings while it's running, but until you shut it down. And it takes another sensor pickup, so there, there's a there's a lot of little things. So if you start down low and you ride up three thousand feet in elevation, or ride down three thousand feet in elevation, if the bike doesn't take another reading, it can be a little problematic. And this is something that was I, I identified when the first I guess twenty twenties came out. I think that they forgot to turn it on in the press bikes. My press bike did something that I'd never, because I've never ridden 3,000 feet of elevation gain, which is about how much it takes. It takes about 2,000 to sort of start feeling it and 3,000 to really feel it. And unless you shut the bike on and off, I'd never ridden that much elevation gain without starting and stopping the bike. So I never noticed this, but there was guys that had, and they said, hey, my TPI bike runs like crap. So when I got the new bike, I actually had the opportunity to find a place where I could do this very quickly on a side of a, on a mine, at a mine where I could ride up the road. So I did it and I'm like, holy crap, there, there's a, there's an issue with this. And I got back to KTM and they said, oh, that, that shouldn't be a problem. And then two days later, they're like, uh, we need to flash your ECU. We've got this fixed because they put the extra sensor, the extra, uh, air ambient air pressure tense, uh, sensor outside there. So, uh, long story short, Brenda, just start your bike, warm it up like you would normally anything else. If you want to start it and stop it, that's not going to hurt anything. Um, you know, just don't be like my buddy George. Yeah. So yeah. my buddy George, we were doing a school here, and right before we leave, George decided he had to take a dump. Yep, and George went and took a dump, and then the school left without him. So what did he do? Hopped on his TPI bike, wasn't even warmed up, fired it up, and took off hauling ass down the road. I just got the cylinder back. <laughs> Four point seizure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full four point cold seizure. Nothing you're gonna do about that. You know, it's not gonna. You know, so if you if you have to take a dump, let your bike warm up. That's the moral of this story. <laughs> but I think you're gonna be really happy with your bikes. Yeah. Any so. advice uh, for the brand new bike? Uh, I think we're just- uh, like. Yeah, I think we're just going to get them and ride them, but, you know, we're going to need things like probably proper skid plates and some guards. Yeah, uh, th- um, yeah, uh, Bulletproof Designs. They yeah. make all the stuff. They they make the state, well, 
a few months ago they had us telling you that they have all the stuff for the 2023s because they were brand new. Well, guess what? They now still have all the stuff for the 2023s, and they are available. So they they have some really good protection for that. Uh, Acherby's has good protective parts for that. Uh, TM Design Works has good stuff. Mm-hmm. I you know mine is relatively stock. Yeah, with my, some bulletproof design stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, bulletproof design stuff, especially the the chain the, guard. The chain guard thing. I would get that if you're going to ride it through the rocks. That's for sure. Hey Matt, what'd you break on the Yamaha today? Uh, I didn't break it. I think that was you. Oh, it was me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You noticed it though, so you broke it. <laughs> I noticed it, but we were swapping back and forth. We had a plastic uh, chain guide that came a little disconnected riding through some rock shoots. Yeah, so. yeah. Anyways, hey, Brenda, thanks a lot for uh, joining. I I, um, I think that you're going to be happy with those bikes. If you have any like specific stuff, but just I would just take the time to break them in. Uh, take the time to, um, you know, 15... 20 hours in maybe that's the time have the suspension service before you start complaining about the suspension i i suspect from where you're coming from and you probably already know this that's why your checkbook is a little different number in it after you did that that these bikes are leaps and bounds from your 98s and 99s and stuff like that i figured that it's like here's the moon <laughs> yeah yeah that's a that's a that's a huge leap and it's funny because some people actually when they when they make such a big change in bikes, they don't like the new bike. It 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 went so far into a different direction that it it's not as stable, it's not as planted. Um, there's certain things about it that you really like. I mean the I mean the throttle response, right? That's... Everything. The only thing I didn't like was how wide the bars are, but that's fixable. I mean, I was comfortable on that bike in five minutes. I was wow. I was wanting to hit the nasty trails. Like, get me off the easy stuff. I, I want to go see what this thing can do. Because of because of throttle response and just drivability and all that, yes? Yes, just how easy it was. Yeah. Simple. Right. <laughs> I, I, re- mm-hmm. I remember the, 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 you know, the late 90s KTMs. It was like, they were, they were it, was a, it was a journey into jetting. <laughs> Especially the, the bigger the displacement, the more you had to spend time jetting. So... Cool. Well, thank you for calling in, and uh, we will hopefully see you out in the trail. Cheers. Thanks. See you. See you, Brenda. Okay. Uh, Tyler Baumgartner says, Jimmy, when you got time, what are the must-haves to prep out on a 20KX450 for Moran racing? Um, when I have time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I, I uh, uh, must haves, man. When you take a motocross bike and go off road, there's there's a, there's a long list of all the stuff. And George just chimed in with his dumpy, mm-hmm. dumpy emoji. There's so much stuff that you need to do to a motocross to make it an off road bike. So if if you already have the bike, Tyler, you're you're there. Um, eighteen inch rear wheel. Uh, I don't know if you need a kickstand if you're racing it for Moran and stuff like that. Suspension's super personal, so motocross suspension actually works pretty decent for someone that's racing kind of desert kind of stuff. I, I tend to like a stiffer setup when I'm trying to go fast too. Right, it has safety built in, but it definitely isn't doesn't have the compliance for traction. So those things you're gonna probably need a bigger gas tank if you want to skip pit stops and things like that. Uh, maybe skid plate. Uh, for sure, protection stuff. I, yeah, I don't yeah. just want to go skid plate. I want to go protection stuff. Check out Bulletproof Designs. They make lots of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But for Moran Racing, I don't think you would need to do anything with... Would you need a like a smaller rear sprocket or something? No. You, you, the bikes accelerate just fine. I don't think there's very many places where you're going to get into a top speed situation where that, that works. And you don't. And mm-hmm. the first gear is already tall, so you don't yeah. really want to compromise that. A recluse clutch can help certain things, mm-hmm. uh, depending on... Because that bike does have a pretty abrupt power band. So having a recluse can kind of smooth out a little bit. So lots of uh, lots of stuff, Tyler. Um, next time you should buy a Yamaha FX. Yeah, my 250 FX in Moran race just fine. Yeah, almost I, totally stock. Actually, it was totally stock. It is other basically than, no. The mapping was stock too. I put the stock mapping back in. It. Right, and like that thing was awesome. I got second in my class. Second in your class out of three people, but that's good. I beat all the other JLR guys. 
That's right. And some of them are experts. They they claim expert at least. Mm-hmm. Hey, we should get Logan to call in. We should get him to Show. call in. I don't know. I don't know where he's been lately. Maybe he's. I hope his uh, shoulders doing better now. Okay. But uh, we do have uh, our next guest on. If you want me to bring him on now. Go ahead. All right, Lyndon. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute and then. Welcome on to Tech Talk. Hey, Curly Stoker. Well, welcome Stoke. back on to Tech Talk. Cur- yeah, <laughs> Curly Stoker said, hey, I meant to mention you boys yesterday. Last week's advice on the 2013 KTM 450 SX with the snow bike kit not revving out, your advice on the injector was spot on. Look at that. Cleaned out the injector and it rips. That's what you get for free, my friends. There we go. Yeah. Saved him thousands of dollars because he probably wanted to put a pipe and ECU on it to fix it. Probably. Okay. Lennon, how we doing? All right, man. Pretty cool. It's awesome to have you on the Seat Concepts Hot Seat Hotline. You might know a little bit about that company. A uh, little bit, yeah, a little bit. I thank you every single time I ride my Tenere 700. <laughs> that seat, it's like you guys, it, like there's certain seats that you just nail it with. And actually even the KTM, I run the KTM tall comfort seats yep. uh, when I'm down in Baja. Yep. And like that's another one, same thing. So good. But anyways, everybody else can be jealous and we have those. So I so you let us stream onto your platform, which is the over forty or is it over fifty? No, it's that was just the old guys. It's just old guys moto fitness. I didn't put an age to it, you know. Just if you consider yourself old or even young but feel old, you're you're well more than welcome, you know. Okay. So how old is old? Well, I'm I'll be fifty nine in a couple months. So yeah, I'm, I'm tapping 54. Am I 54 or 55? I don't know. 54. I think I'm 54 right now. doesn't matter. I'm old. Yeah. I think I, I think I got old when I was, uh, 49. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I've actually, I'm actually judging my oldness by my eyesight. (laughs) Yeah. I lost mine (laughs) at about 45. Oh Yeah. So, so the cool thing about your group is, is you get to see what a lot of different guys are doing and they're, they're really focusing on the fitness side of things. And you've been doing something interesting. You've been kind of updating us with your race results, which for a while weren't improving. You were kind of like fourth place guy in your class. Yeah. And then I slipped and had an eighth place or or something. And then, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's really tough though, Jimmy, because when you go to Florida, even though it's. 35 degrees at home you show up down there and it's 85 and humid you know and uh that's no matter how much i train at home and ride at home i'm just not prepared for that you know so yeah so so home for linden is idaho he's racing a series down in florida and so when i when i start thinking about you know train you know like i said training and this this is where i want to i want to poke at you a little bit it was there's on the bike training and then off the bike training. Right. And, and you've been really diligent about like modifying your diet, you know, getting better, losing weight. And I've seen it. Like I, I couldn't believe when I saw you this summer versus when I saw you probably the six or eight months before it was like, it was like Linden light. Right. <laughs> yeah. Tune, tune, tune up the diet on a, on a program with the trainer, you know, taking this stuff super serious. Yep. And then, and then, and then you, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm finishing fourth, fourth, fourth. And then, and then all of a sudden I saw a second place, right? Yeah. But I didn't see the eighth. Did you leave that one out? Uh, I think it was before that was earlier in the season. So, um, that was one of the first ones where it's really shocking to go down there, you know? So, um, <laughs> and, and for those people that don't know, Florida is uh, sand hoops. Yeah, and lots, lots of them. And then if there if there's not hoops, imagine planting um, like pineapples in the ground. Yeah, and, and with with like and and they start out with bushes coming out of them, but the, the bushes all get torn off the top. That's the, that's the palmettos and stuff. Yeah, and then it's it's like going through a field of landmines. That don't blow up. You just hit them and then ricochet off of these things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there, there's there's definitely a technique for that. So I, you know, I, I run this riding school. It's my other side job over here. I have this oh. riding school, and 
so I raced. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to pat myself on the back. I hate talking about myself that much, but I raced a couple weeks ago. Right. Oh yeah, you I, did. I went out and did a sprint enduro, and uh, I, I decimated the over fifty class. Wow. And oh, did you get a trophy? I haven't got it yet, but yeah, I get a trophy. Oh, podium shot. I would have been on the podium both days out of all the A riders. Oh really? I would have been third overall A, and I got beat by one guy who was a vet, and then one other guy who was like a regular A class. So that's not not bad for an old dude, right? Lenny? Oh hell no, but but let's let's be honest. You have a you, your pedigree is a little better than mine, you know. So. But I, here's what I want to bring up. I I was at that time in quite possibly the worst shape of my life. Right. <laughs> so and it was a sprint enduro, so they were short. You know, the tests were like 15 minutes long. And then you got to you got to rest in between. But even when I finished, I wasn't tired. I was more, I want to say I was more sore. Right. Yep. Because I was expecting my muscles to do things that maybe they hadn't done for a long time, and, and all this stuff. But what this did do after being sore and getting kind of mad at myself, I decided, hey, I need to I need to get in better shape. So I've been riding the bicycle a little more diligent. Actually, training for a bicycle event I want to do. And then I started running again because I need to do more of this. How many miles a week? Uh, right now we're at five. Okay. Five in one day. Okay. And it hurt. Yeah. I, but I was supposed to, I was supposed to run tonight, mm-hmm. but we did flat track instead. Well, that's kind of like I have, a, I have a watch here with heart rate, and it 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 kind of showed that my uh, that my heart rate it doesn't get up when I ride. It didn't even spike when I was going by you on the flat track? No. <laughs> I'm not letting this down, by the way. That uh, never passed you in my entire life, so I'm going to soak it up. I, I was I was just milking the outside, just cruising around, you yep. know, playing with traction and stuff. So I, I didn't really want to destroy your... <laughs> your oh, thing. no. Well, at the very end, it confirmed my suspicions in which you weren't really trying. Oh, okay, good. No, I, I, at the very end, I was like, okay. I, so, have, my, I have my five minutes. So my question and my offer is, Lennon, I want I would like to work with you on on some riding techniques. Okay, I'm switching so, because it got dark on me out there. So. I saw that. Yeah, it got really dark really quick. That's the way you know you know how this. The, it's funny when, how the sun works. Well, he's on the other side of the alien area. Oh, really? He's up in he's up in Caliente right now. Oh, yeah. there's some good riding up there. And yeah, when the aliens decide to take the sun down, then they put it down. And then mm-hmm. they put, pick the moon up. It happens really quick. Actually, and, he's probably sitting at the RV park. I've spent a lot of times at. <laughs> <Agua Caliente. laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyways, uh, because because I think that you know, and and I appreciate the 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 effort to want to get in better fitness and better shape and all that stuff. And I know it does help, especially when you're. The problem is I live my uh, a big majority of my life at a very high level of fitness, and then I let it fall off, and I and I feel it. And but then I get lazy, yeah. And then, and I but I but riding is what I've done, and I I'm so I'm I'm I don't want to say so good at it because I still every time I ride I I pick at myself because I don't do it properly, but I the idea is when you're riding really good you don't your heart rate doesn't go up and you, you don't use a lot of energy. Well, so it's these little kind of techniques. The last race in that, Florida, my max heart rate was 145 or something like that. So that's, that's not that much. I mean, I, yeah. I jump, I jump into a cold pool. My heart rate goes up to 190. Yeah. And if, and if I, if I get on a, uh, I'm on my pedal bike, my analog pedal bike, and I ride up a, a steep incline, I can go up to like 180 pretty easy. Yeah. And it ne- never happens. I mean, I'm rarely, I want to say my max heart rate, and it's really rare that goes up over 130, but it's 140 is when I, I, I wish I would have worn this when I was racing because then there, there's the whole thing when you're racing, all of a sudden there's this little extra tension. I think it's 10 heartbeats a minute yeah. of tension that comes with this. So I think, I think that the if it if it's really motorcycle racing and motorcycle riding you want to get better at, then that would be the best thing to practice. Yeah. So so you just and and you can 
if you fine tune that and not to short circuit all the all the training which is you know getting better getting healthy but if you fine tune some of these little things you find out that you're using less energy your riding becomes more efficient and then hopefully the results go up right <laughs> well the, the weather um before this last race our weather got better at home and i was actually i got to ride quite a bit actually and uh and that, and I, and it shows, it obviously shows in the, in the race results, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know, I've never, I've never taken any riding courses. I've never taken any instructions on riding. I just go out. I always try to find people faster than me to ride with and just latch onto them like a pit bull and watch what they do and try to do what they do. You know, so I, I watched, I watched the guy at your, at your shop, put the seat cover on, right. <laughs> And then, and then I tried to do it. Right. And, um, you'd probably chastise me, <laughs> <laughs> but it, in the, it's, and it's funny because when, when you, and like what you practice, you know, just riding is good, you know, in riding and then think about your riding is good. But then if you, you know, just get really into the, the kind of core elements of, you know, whether it's turning or braking or accelerating, you know, and, and, you know, being balanced and neutral and centered on these bikes, all these crazy things that, that seem so simple. And then you start listening to, you know, it, it's funny how secretive some of the motocross guys have been in the past about what they, what they really did. Right. And, and I think it took a little bit of a lot of the trials guys to start switching over into motocross and then how quickly they were able to pick up speed. Right. And not not motocross trials into off road, right? And how quickly those guys were able to pick up speed, and then they start making it look easy. And now you go to like, I arguably I think this enduro cross, the in, indoor, you know, extreme enduro stuff is some of the gnarliest stuff you you know you you can watch. And look at the guys that are dominating that; they're all ex trials guys. Yeah. And it's just it, and they. They just, they, they have balance. And I think the balance kind of carries a long way into a lot of the, you know, a lot of the stuff. And we just, and most people just throw balance out the window and we're just going to ma- mask it with momentum and inertia. Right. <laughs> so, well, I, okay. I'm off. I'm, I'm offering you free, free training. I need to come up to I, Idaho. I, I, I want to do at that track that you guys have right outside of Boise. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to try to do a class up there okay yeah do you want to yeah well let's talk about that we can make something happen we sponsor the track so uh it's oh oh how we oh 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 almost like hawaii and they just mm-hmm. call it omc it's the <laughs> omc yeah because that's that's you know people down in Nevada don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always just say OMC. If you say OMC, anybody from up there knows exactly what you're talking about. So yeah, we, I, I, I definitely, I, I, when they were um, getting their stuff together with their drawing and things, uh, I donated a class and maybe hopefully we can get that person up there too. And we'll try to try to do something. But so you are right now, lucky man. Uh, in Caliente, where the dirt is wet, yeah, for the Nevada 200 trail ride, which is kind of kind of an industry invite only uh, little trail ride, yeah. And you're getting to market, yeah. So me and uh, Scott Harden, you know, he's the he's the ringleader, and um, and uh, but he's been telling us what to do. But me and uh, Rodney Smith, myself. Uh, there's a guy named Eric Holt, um, a guy named Corn Dog. I don't know what his real name is, <laughs> but we talk <laughs> Corn Dog. And uh, but no, we we've been for three days now. We've laid out uh, close to 200 200 miles of trail. We got uh, just just some small, um, you know, may have to reroute a couple sections. We got some water issues in a couple of places, but outside of that, it's pretty much done. So, Matt, Matt, imagine rivers running in Caliente. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually have a picture of me riding through one in the Caliente. Yeah, so so the thing is the snow is melting right now. Uh-huh. And so those sand washes that are normally dry mm-hmm. are wet and uh, dirt's wet. So are, are there still entries available for this? I think so. Um, and I and I don't, it's not in, industry only anymore, Scott. A while back opened it up. So it used to be like um, secret handshake and if, you know, you can invite a couple friends, but it had to stop at a couple. I, I don't know if it, I wasn't a part of it back then, but we've been we've been a part of this for like six years now, and uh, I've this would be my fourth time coming here, and it's it's you know it's a hell of a lot of fun, and but this is the first time I've gotten to work behind the scenes, um, and uh, I don't think the average person realizes how much work goes into something like this. I mean, a hellacious amount of work, you know. Yeah, I mean, and that's just that's just the marking it, you know, with the all the permits and all the oh, stuff with the BLM and different things. That's that's even mega compared to where, you know, you guys are just kind of the feet on the ground making it happen the week before the event. So, no, Scott starts working on next year's event on the Monday after this after after this one ends, you know. And then and then he and then he's got you scheduled to go clean up all the markings as well. <laughs> well. It's actually a really cool system. The way they have it done is uh, he has seven sweep riders. So their job is to make sure nobody's left on the trail, but also they clear the, they pull all the markings down as they go. So oh, that's good. At the end of the event, technically it all should be down, you know, so. <laughs> cool. Do you, do you know where people could go check out, uh, to see if they can get an entry for this. Yeah, so it's uh, you can just do Google Nevada 200 trail ride and it comes right up. And it's Harden Off awesome. Road. Harden Off Road is the uh, is the promoter and it's Scott Harden, but that's his business. It's called Harden Off Road. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure um, accommodations might be weak if you're if you're a kind of person that can just. Uh, you may have to drive a little, little farther out of town to find a hotel because I think all the local hotels is, is booked up. So, but um, right. uh, if you, but if you have a trailer or you have a tent or what, there's plenty of room here for tents. So if there's an entry fee and you don't mind roughing it, I'm sure you can get in, you know, that sounds cool. I've, 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 I have not been, I've ridden around there a bunch. I've not been on this ride. I have a lot of friends that go up there and do this. And, uh, so cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, uh, We'll we'll see in the we'll see in the training pretty soon. Okay, yeah, I'll, I, well, I'll get in touch with you privately and we'll let's, let's figure something out. But I, I want to talk but, about one thing before I go, if I may. So for sure, you got you were talking with the last caller um, about how what how bitching the new bikes are, you know? Uh, right. I'm riding a brand new 23 Husky FX 450. And it's just phenomenal, man. All, all I did is put a, a little bit stiffer back spring on it and play with the rebound clickers. And it's what about the seat? Well, of course, I put a seat on it, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but even the air forks, man, if, if I didn't know the air forks, I couldn't tell it. And the, the, it's on, it's the first bike I've ever owned. Why I don't think I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm not gonna spend any money on revals or any of that stuff. I, I'm riding the piss out of this thing, and it's just great. You know, this is, it's so hard. I mean, it's funny because if, but you haven't, have you run to the internet to post what you just said? Um, no, not really. If you, yeah, you no, care people no, you, cause hard, you, you know, good. Because you're just out, you're just out riding and having a good time. You're happy. So you're, you're in the, I would say 95 percentile of people that, you know, hops on a bike, has a great time. Thing works good. You you know, you do these little things that you do to set it up for yourself, right? And then we're good, and we don't complain. I I just want to know, like, if if you put it in the back of a truck, is it going to blow up? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, just checking because yeah. that seems to be any any bike. Like, if you take it from the KTM dealer now and you put it in your truck, it blows up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. Awesome. Well, hey, glad you're enjoying that bike. We're actually trying to. Uh, Trevor is working on a 450 FX style comparison of all the different all the different bikes right now, and I think we have a. I, th- I think we're going to try to. I think he actually has to get a gas gas from a friend of his because KTM is completely sold out on that kind of version of bikes, whether it's the right. 450 
XC, uh, XCF, the Husky, and yours is FX. Yeah. Or the Gas Gas, and I think they call that an EX. Yeah, EX. Oh, what do they call it? Um, and the the KTM's an XC, right? And the uh, uh, Yamaha. I don't know what they call yeah. the Yamaha. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, Yamaha's an FX. FX. Yamaha's called the FX. Okay. Yeah, Yamaha, Yamaha, proud sponsor of Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. Hey, one other thing is, uh, Tim Skelly says, "I hope you grease the dry linkage bearings." <laughs> yep, yeah. No, I did that too. When I switched to, man, getting the, that's one thing. Getting the shock off the thing is a PIA. But um, when I was doing all that, I greased all that stuff. And tell Tim I said so, hi. So yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get Tim on the show here pretty soon because I've known Tim for a long time. So, so uh, his little shop down in Orange County. Yeah, the uh, Inside Line Moto. Yep. They uh, they they unfortunately they play this show. They listen to it back, and I I have to you know make sure they don't have any really good customers in there when they're listening to it. <laughs> I don't know how I do that, but <laughs> I can get blamed. But anyways, hey Lennon, <laughs> thanks a lot for uh, joining. In. Say hi to Rodney for me. Rodney uh, heard heard us talk earlier. And called me and wanted to know if we wanted any new beta test bikes, which we definitely do when we get some time. The more bikes, the better. Uh, yeah, but it's a lot of work. Oh, it is a lot of work. <laughs> the pictures don't take themselves, right, Matt? Oh, they certainly don't. <laughs> so, okay, Lennon. Hey, right. hey, good luck in your next 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 race, and uh, we will uh, see you out in the trail. Okay, man. Have a good one. Bye. Cheers. All right. That was Lennon from Seat Concepts. Uh, interesting story he was he was a guest on a show not too long ago uh actually it was a long time ago probably uh, 40 episodes ago no no not that many no like 15 or 15 or 20 yeah he was a he was a guest uh a while back kind of gave us the story of seat concepts how you know basically he was making his own seats for vintage bikes and he thought i could i could do this mm -hmm. and to in 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 very really short time they went from you know, it was just in his garage to a really nice facility uh, up in Idaho and putting out just amazing stuff. And they're like when you the science of putting a seat together and mm -hmm. when they the, the way they mix their foams and all this stuff, it's pretty cool. And I'm, I'm proud to have them as a sponsor. And I like running their seats, <laughs> especially on when I want to get comfort, comfortable seats. I've had some people build me custom seats before. Mm -hmm. And their seats are like those custom seats off the shelf. So pretty, yeah, that, pretty cool. I got to ride uh, one of the Rhino bikes recently with the Seat Concept seat. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. the That's the one that has the little the little wings on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a little comfier in the butt where you sit down, but they hold you up when you're starting to get aggressive on the gas. So Dave Donnelly wants to know where our super top secret flat track is. He'd like to check it out. Uh, we should ask him how much whiskey he has, right? Is it whiskey mm. or tequila? Oh, uh, we'll say whiskey. Whiskey, I yeah. I I prefer more whiskeys than tequilas. As the price goes up, well, I kind of lean more towards tequila, but yeah. we'll, go with, we'll go whiskey. <laughs> it's not in my budget either way. Yeah. Uh, so you're you're a Milwaukee's best kind of guy. The cheaper, the better, really. Yeah. This is ice. There you go. Yeah, but it yeah. was sitting in the, in my uh, in my motorhome all day in the in the back, so it's it's good. It's not iced. <laughs> uh, I saw a Facebook user was that that wasn't. Um, uh, he said Tech Talk Taco Tuesday and Tequila. That would be Mark Daniel said that in the beginning, and then he must have changed him to Facebook user because oh, that's it. definitely his thing. That is his thing, unless the people are picking up on it. He texted me back. I right after the last show, I needed to know what size cuz mm -hmm. I have a couple of uh, t-shirts yeah, signed. Yeah. And uh he he texted me back in Spanish and said grande. Is that large or extra large? That's an excellent question. That's a good question. So Mark, if you're out there, uh let us know about that t-shirt and I'll get that like right into the line of stuff that's going to go to the post office to get like postages put on it. <laughs> so uh okay i think uh, yeah, we, I, hung, I hung up on the on the uh instagrammers because well you're about to yeah no, i did up. No. no actually no I you're still alive no I, no you're is? still alive oh, i'm still alive yes it well, says right the, there okay so how do i unlive it i just push this button here X. yeah that button there and now i actually try to do this because they can't hear the caller 
No, they can't. So this show really sucks for mm-hmm. them. Yeah, they should come. The over. fact that there was people on there for fifty six minutes was pretty impressive. Well, that was so, an hour long Instagram session. Yeah, I should probably quit doing Instagram because. So it, the chat is saying uh, Grande is large. Muy Grande is mucho extra Grande large. is extra large. Okay. Well, I'll go back and check to see. What, he said Grande of some sort, and mm-hmm. uh, I'll get that out there. But we got a large and an extra large signed. So. Yes. Where at least, you know, and it could get lost in the mail like the other one that I'm pretty sure I sent. <laughs> <laughs> There's just some random stranger just getting all these Ricky Brayback signed t-shirts. <laughs> hey, Seat Concepts seats are proudly handmade and developed in the USA by motorcycle enthusiasts. Seat Concepts offers a wide variety of seats from stylish replacement covers to complete seats as well as various height and width profiles. Each seat incorporates a proprietary foam formulation, this is what I was talking about, that is designed to provide unmatched support and impact dampening to the rider. Whether you are hitting the motocross track or gearing up for a trek across the country, Seat Concepts has a seat for you. See all the options at SeatConcepts.com. Seat Concepts, saving asses since 2009. How was that? That was good. Pretty smooth. Yeah, I like it. Clip that. I liked it last a little bit there. Yeah, that's theirs. I didn't add that. Oh, that is theirs. Yeah, that's theirs. You, a... you thought I added that, didn't you? I thought I thought you did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sometimes I'm good like that, but not usually. No. Yeah. Sorry, real have our strengths. Okay. Um, not mechanically inclined. Yeah, I didn't say that was one of my strengths. Got it. <laughs> I, I was glad that you were able to put that bolt back in and recover the the cracked uh, rear disc thing. Hey, and today. I learned. I learned about fuel pump issues that could potentially happen on some uh, KTMs that are going on nine to 10 years old. Right. It's yeah. so simple. I learned a lesson. Yeah. Like, like that was, it took us 20 minutes to fix that. It blew me away. Right. A bike that was dead on the trail. Mm-hmm. Essentially. You could idle it back. Probably. Uh, I could get it running, but I was kind of scared. Cause I'm like, this is not good. And we're so there's a truck right here and it's right there. It's like, it's just as easy just to load it up. Right. So Matt uh, walked in the door. He says, "Hey, I got a problem. You know, he broke basically broke one of my bikes." Yeah. And I'm like, "Okay, what is it?" And he's like, "Yeah, it started. It started, started backfiring. And backfiring, running, blah blah blah, this and that." And it's like, "Okay." And I, in my head, Matt's telling me all this stuff, and I'm like, "Okay, has spark. It's backfiring, doing some stuff. It's a fueling issue. Just went straight to fueling." Okay. Like, asked him a couple other quick questions. And I said, okay, I have a tool for this. Taco Moto makes a really nice fuel pressure checking tool. I probably didn't even need to put it on, but I just wanted to show you the tool and show you like the process. The process, yeah. And so you, I, you even told me what to do in the field, what to check for in the field. Right. And so, yeah, how to squeeze it. You know, instead of having a fuel pressure gauge, there's a fuel pressure, you can actually squeeze the hose. And if you let the fuel pressure out, the hose squeezes kind of easy. Yeah. But you pump it up and the hose gets hard. Amazing. Yeah. So that's that's the if your hose is a little limp in the field, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, a little limp. Right, your hose is a little limp in the field, doesn't have pressure. There's a problem. Is this going on my grinder? No, thing? no, no. Just okay. Yeah, keep uh, going. Yeah, keep going. I, I'm, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this. Oh, my choice from the Saunders Family Winery. Well, <laughs> the thing is, Dave, uh, if you go to Saunders Family Winery and pick up. They have a they have a couple really good wines, and you almost walk across the street. You'll be so close to that flat track <laughs> that you make sure that you don't drop the bottle when you're astonished by my amazing like pivot into the turns right there, and yeah. then by me passing Jimmy. Yeah, or or you're, you're astonished when Matt passes me. Yeah, yes. so that'd be that'd be a good way to figure this out and bring that Husaberg because that'd be a fun bike to ride around ooh, that flat ooh, track. Ooh. You know, I need to go to that winery. Swedish trench machine. Is that what it's called? That's is that what, what the that's, nickname that's was? That's what my one of my new Husebergs has a sticker that says Swedish trench trench. I machine. I remember I had a sticker that said Swedish something, but I can't remember what that was. Yeah, it's actually Muy Grande. Says Victor, and Muy Victor Grande. Victor would know because Victor is a one hundred percent certified Mexican. There we go. <laughs> you know, I'm, hey, I San Felipe Bob's back. I don't know if I've seen him on here for a while now. No. Uh, get your kid on. We have some drops for him to pull out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 we got. I got to post those clips too. Okay, some of them are uploaded. They're just private videos right now. 
And we said Husaberg plenty of times, and Victor's going ding ding. Or do we ding ding for Victor now? My Valentine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. hey, we've got a bunch of questions that we're going to get to. Uh, I got them all right here, list on a sheet. Matt's going to read them off. But, but until we do that, you've got to listen to some commercials. Listen to these commercials because these companies are the ones that are supporting this podcast. I believe in every single one of these companies. Use all their products. Uh, enjoy. The message. The defending champion. The all-new Yamaha YZ450F. What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. What is the Taco Touch? It's the best service in the industry. Virtually 24-7 tech support via email or text. And it's like having a dirt bike doctor on call every day of the year, helping you fix your bike or recommend parts or setups for you. If you've ever received an order from us, you know that the Taco Touch extends to our fulfillment and our orders come with the coolest stickers that you've ever had uh, buying parts from anybody before and a handful of root beer barrel candies. Um, all of our Taco Moto Co. branded components come with a no questions asked lifetime warranty and we'll even extend out the warranty of other manufacturers, OEM and aftermarket parts where we can, sometimes for life. We test and tune endlessly and exhaustively and obsessively. We're trying to destroy everything that we can before you get your hands on it to look for weaknesses and to improve it or to make recommendations to the manufacturer. And if it's something that doesn't uh, meet grade, then we don't offer it on the store. Everything that we carry is something that we have personally used, tested, and ridden, and raced, and knows meets uh, the high taco touch demanding standard. Go out and get some adventure. Welcome back. Uh, everybody always wants to know the tequila that, that we're having here. Uh, Milagro. Going to good old um, staple. Nice big bottle. Mm -hmm. So this is the 50 in Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. I'll be having that for the rest of the show. And uh, welcome back. Thanks for enjoying our sponsors. By the way, Fast Company, www.fastco.com. So I rode stock bikes today, and my wrists mm -hmm. are telling me this. Yeah. Yes. So uh, flex handlebars. And I've been starting to ride the mountain bike, and I have my analog bike does not have flex bars, which it will mm -hmm. pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. By analog if, bike, it's the non-electric bike? Non-electric bike, okay. yeah. And my my electric bike has the flex bars. What a difference. Like. And, and mountain bikes are really stiff and rigid. And yeah. Just that shock that I get in my hands is good. So uh, Fast Company uh, making the flex bars and the brake pedal spring and the little things that go on your rim lock to keep it centered up on the bike. And they have a torque wrench for your spokes. Lots of cool products. You need that kind of stuff. Uh, and I got accused of only paying attention to my Mexican followers on... Facebook in the chat. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Todd Hicks felt a little bit, uh, T.W. Hicks felt a little bit uh, spited because we were paying attention to Victor because mm-hmm. he said Grande, and I guess Todd said Grande, but the, the comments are just flying by here. When Let's you, say we're actually getting a lot more when you have ten thousand When you have 10,000 viewers actively watching this show, like all the time, it's like this, and then the, ch- the, the comments just go crazy. San Felipe Bob's outing his kid as a roadie geek, mm. you know? If you're mit, if you're listening to this thing as a podcast or something, and you want to see what's going on, come in and join us live in the chat. You can pop a question up. You can actually, even if you're watching this at another time, you can actually add a question even after the show goes. We pick those questions up. Yeah, they come the back comments. in. Comments, questions, whatever they called. Uh, Matt, hit us with questions. Hit me with questions. All right, so we're gonna go with the questions that were submitted before the show. So the first one's gonna be Asher uh, Petkovich. What dirt bikes glo- What dirt bike gloves last? My dad and I have run th- uh, through two to three gloves each a year. Each a year. Let's see. I was thinking about trying the cli- climb gloves next, but reviews have said their gloves have dropped in quality. I don't care about price or armor. I just want a dexterous glove that will last a few years. Okay, Asher. Uh, that's a uh, tough remember. question. <laughs> Th- no, that's a, that's a good question. It's a really good question. No, no. That, yeah, yeah. Just tough answer. <laughs> no, it's not a tough answer. It's easy answer. If Every gear manufacturer has good and bad years. And I've known this because there's some, I, I climb as a sponsor of the show. I wear climb stuff pretty much head to toe. It's good stuff. There have been years where the gloves have been bad. And just like you're hearing all this stuff about a KTM TPI, it blows up when you actually, when you touch the grips. And now I think, I think if you touch the grips, the bike blows up. Uh, but so guess what you hear about the complaints are about the bad things. And so I will, I will tell you that there have been some years where the climb gloves, especially the, I don't even know the, 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 the leather like material in the palms was not that good. And they kind of, they kind of disintegrated and mm-hmm. it, it wasn't instant, but it took some time, but I noticed it. And when I noticed this, I get right back to them and say, hey, what's up with these gloves? And like a lot of times at that point, they already know because they've had customers that have them. Or if it's if we're doing a photo shoot and with some early stuff, and I'm like, hey, you might want to check into this. Then they get to the manufacturer and they ask about this stuff. So a lot of times it has to do with supply chain and vendor issues and all these things like that. So yes, there are years of climb gloves that were substandard. The last few years, they've been really good. Hmm. Okay. So that's the climb quote defense, but it's a defense of every single gear company I've used. I've so if you ask me about gloves, I would say if you want good, high quality gloves, and and most of it has to do with fit and function. Fox has been known, and I think they're kind of known in the industry for having some of the best gloves. They just I don't know their factory is good. They understand fit. They understand materials. They've had really good gloves, and they have they have so many gloves. They have like they have like four lines of gear, and they have seven lines of gloves or something like this. I remember back in the day, it was amazing. But they've always been really good at gloves, so that's maybe where I would start if you're having some issues. Uh, and then it's kind of poking around. I know some guys that run like Home Depot gardening gloves, like a certain brand because they're $9 and they last twice as long as whatever their favorite, whether it was a, a, a Moose or a Thor or a, a whatever brand uh, glove that they found that they could buy these other ones and these work gloves and they work just as fine. They didn't have that kind of the protection but like he says here, he's not really worried about protection. He's worried about, you know, the dexterity and stuff like this. I like the climb, the, we'll call them the lower end gloves. Uh, not that I do not like the XC gloves cause they're a little too tight fitting and, um, not my cup of tea, but I, I like them because they're tight fitting, but I will say my set from last year starting to see some holes. Yeah. But how much do you ride? And, and mm-hmm. how it's, that's last year. Oh, it is last so year. And this was the gear I've been using a lot and right. using when working. I'm not saying that 
they're not good. Yeah. I'm just yeah. So so I so for the reason you like the XC, I don't like the XC, mm-hmm. and and then I like the um. I want to make sure I get the Mojave glove, which is the the Mojave glove is a little more vented, a little lighter. I like those ones, and then I also like the, the Dakar has kind of been a hit or miss year over year. Uh, whether they you know sometimes they add a little bit of protection or they add a little bit extra padding, and we're talking like you know probably a half a millimeter of padding. And all of a sudden, it can go from for me good to bad just based on feel. So mm-hmm. I've always liked the uh, the Mojave glove, but anyways, lots of uh, glove talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I glove mean, talk. Uh, there's in. I think it's one of those things where if you can, you know, because fit is so important in the glove world. You know, you have to be able to try it because some some gloves are skinny and long, and those are the worst for me because I have short little fingers. And then they pinch, and so I need to run like an XL with a lot of extra finger width. So my hand isn't probably the best example. I should probably wear a medium glove, but I need to wear a large because my fingers are fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a little girth to yeah. them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I'm not the same. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah, if you if you have a chance to go try a bunch of different ones on, I would I would do that, but. Uh, Lots of different things. Uh, some of us has calluses on our hands. I end up ripping some some brand gloves brand gloves off. Yeah. So and I knew people that were wearing the mechanics gloves. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we had a couple of people in the chat say that. Yeah. So mechanics were actually uh, pretty good as well. So yeah, it's it's a it's a kind of thing. And this is the interesting thing. Like you can watch our chat as we're doing this. And these guys, a lot of the people in our chat, I know they ride a lot. And they have different experiences, and and Victor, I think Victor, he doesn't work that hard. He stands around and watches his guys work really hard. <laughs> so he must get his he must get his calluses from rubbing his hands, thinking about all the money, thinking he's all the money he's getting, getting yeah, from, the day. from his dudes. I know how that works, mm-hmm. right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. How we doing? We doing okay? Oh, we're doing okay. Like I always say, every time we hang up the phone on this show, I always say, "Keep making me money, kid." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, and a Q1 just Q1 just ended, so we have some income statements. So oh, checks to, to sign out. Do I have to write a check? Uh, well, I need one more thing from you, actually. He says it's from cooking the goose. Ah. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, next one's going to be Scott uh, Zundel. I have a low-hour 2017 RMX 450Z, fully uncorked with the JD jetting tuner. It has a hanging high idle. How can I fix that? Thanks, Scott. He's from uh, Pittsburgh. Who that's a that's a good one. I'm trying to remember that bike because I remember we tested we tested one of those. Yeah, I was playing around with that JD Cheddar JD and jetting tuner on it, it too. The the tuner should have no effect on this unless you've really modified the the idle setting mixture, like you've added or taken away fuel. A uh, hanging idle to me, it well it could be rich or lean, and it really depends on what the what the butterfly valve is doing in, in the in the fuel injection at that point. So I would I would number one, if this was I, I just had to go diagnose diagnose this. I don't know anything about it. I would go and make sure that my butterfly valve was shutting all the way down. In other words, I could let go of the throttle, it closes all the way and it closes solid, bang, to the point where I might have to back it off so that it makes the bike stall. And then I would slowly, making sure that the throttle is free and everything, I use the the adjustment on the on the throttle body to get it to idle. Mm-hmm. And and then at that point, and I would set my JD tuner so that because the bike idles when it's stock, should if everything else, and this is assuming everything else is okay. The bike is idling when it's stock. Set the JD jet, jetting tuner at three because that means no modification to the idle circuit, and and get it to idle that way, you know, get it to s- set that way, and then you're kind of at standard, and that should be okay. The hanging idle, for the most part, has always been, uh, you know, a lean condition. It's 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 lean, and then. And then some somehow the fuel injection like tries to compensate for it in a certain sense. So there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, going on there. But I bet you your your butterfly valve isn't shutting all the way down. And there's something else mechanical in there. So 
hopefully it helps. Uh, Scott, let us know if that if that doesn't work, hit us back. We'll keep poking away. Okay, so Austin Coleman wrote in 2019 KTM XCW. Just got a month ago. Just got a month ago and loving it so far for the trails in Washington compared to his '98 YZ250. New, he's new to the TPI and he was wondering how do you go about warming them up? Heard conflicting ways. Blip, <laughs> not to blip. We answered this question actually. Let's see. Does it take forever to warm up? Seems really low on power. Uh, then comes alive at the mid range after a few minutes of riding. All good. Any recommendations for upgrades? Only thing I can think of is to stiffen the high speed in the rear for the jumps and whoops out on the trails, but curious what you would do. I, I am, hey, Austin, <laughs> thanks for enjoying the show. I'm amazed at how we went from how to warm my bike up to a suspension setting. Yeah, yeah. We just jumped. We just we just literally jumped into the atmosphere. But the good thing is that whoever's wearing the gloves out, you're riding a lot. By mm-hmm. the way, somebody in the chat brought that up. That's that's good. Maybe you're riding too much. You should probably stop riding, and then you <laughs> won't wear gloves out, and then it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, let's see. Enriching the fueling on low range idle circuit. My 19 TPI did the same thing, adding an idle screw mod and closing the air screw. So here here we most of these KTM's, and we're back to Austin's question at the same time. Uh, most of these KTM's, when they're completely stock, when you buy them brand new, they idle just fine. I have a 2019. I haven't added any sort of modifications to it, and it idles just fine. Still does, always has, haven't jacked with it. It's good. But there's all kinds of modifications you can do. And generally, when you do one modification, it affects something else downstream or upstream or wherever it is, and you're going to be chasing things. So let's get that straight. So how do how do I go about my 2019? How do I go about warming it up? Well, I start it up, <laughs> and it, it starts right up, and then I blip it a few times. <laughs> so that's what I do. I just kind of blip it a few times. And then it takes me, like I said, 15, 20 seconds. It's probably in gear and ready to go. It may be two seconds before I pop it in gear. When it's dead cold, it might be 45 seconds. I don't care. Is there blips in there? Yeah. Most of the time there's some blip or not. But I need blip. And I take off, and then I'm mellow on it, and I ride. And it's fine. Never fouled a spark plug. Never had an issue. Uh, so... But I do ride it, I want to say I ride it medium aggressive. Mm-hmm. So it gets cleaned out every once in a while. So all these all these different things. Uh, so the, the hanging idle thing, my bike is stock. I actually have, I have a well stock. It has, a, has the Lex pipe on it, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Hey, by the way, you people, you people, when you're buying parts, click through our link. We're going broke here. Matt, did you see the check last month? Yeah, yeah. I can, like, I'm going to drink it right now. Mm. Okay. Well, when I finish that thing, our whole check's gone. Mm-hmm. At least my cut. But anyways, uh, click through our link on Rocky Mountain ATVMC. I have a Lex pipe on mine and an FMF. Uh, which muffler is it? It's the one with the spark rester. Power core 2. I don't know which what it's called. So anyways, I don't have any problems with this stuff. So I don't have any hanging idols or anything weird like this. So a lot of times hanging idle, generally it's it starts when you tip over and crash to the right side and your throttle hits the ground and it bends the throttle tube and then it doesn't completely close. That's usually where the hanging idle, start, idle starts. So if you come back and tell me that you've never crashed to the right-hand side or whatever... Okay, so any recommendations for upgrades? Um, Well, let's see. You should probably buy the no blow up tie down kit. Uh, It's it's for sale right now on JimmyLewisOffRoad.com. It it basically it's a it's a special tie down that when you put your bike in the back of the truck, it won't blow up. Oh, for those uh, KTM's. Any bike, actually. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put it on any bike, and 
these tie downs will not allow your bike to blow up in the truck or shortly after you take it out of the truck and ride it. Your mm-hmm. bike won't blow up as long as you don't do any stupid modifications. That's the that that the tie down actually has a, a thing on it that says, "Did you do any stupid modifications?" Honey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so actually speaking of KTM's blowing up, I don't know if I ever heard exactly what happened with uh, Jim's bike that just spontaneously died. The one that got hot. They got really hot and then the battery just died. So it was a battery issue. Mm-hmm. Something happened to the battery, and I don't know what happened to the battery, but so low voltage caused some issues. I don't know. I, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but it, I don't even know if he put a new battery in it. I don't know if he had something extra running or plugged into it or mm-hmm. whatever, but he still rides that bike, and I haven't. I actually never bothered to ask what the whole problem was. Thank mm-hmm. you, Brenda. Brenda's shopping through Rocky Mountain ATV MC links, and we also have Amazon links. So when you're buying all of the things you buy on Amazon, like Trevor actually put a link on one of our tests on dirtbiketest.com for paper towels. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know why Trevor needs so many paper towels, but one can only imagine. So if you're shopping on on, uh, Amazon as well, you can click through that link too. And it, it it helps us out. It makes it so that I can have tequila and Matt can afford gas to drive all the way from Vegas because he has a girlfriend. Yep. Whoa. That was an admission? Yeah. 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 Big yeah. big things. Big life changes. Big life changes. Yeah. Okay. You're moving her out here. Valley of the Dirt people. She actually likes it out here. Oh, that's good. Yeah. She she actually kind of likes people being People look this. at her funny in that Tesla. Oh, I know. <laughs> so I know. Okay. Good for you. Congratulations. I'm glad it's a girlfriend too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And Brenda got her new Parker DTs on Amazon. That's good. That's a good tire. Pretty good. I I like it. Okay. Cool. So do we want to go to some questions we were kind of missing in chat or do you want to go to those YouTube comment ones? Uh, you're in charge. Okay. Let's go to these ones in chat because we've been... We don't want to ignore the people in the chat, by the way. Yeah, we, we want you, to reward the people who are here. By the way, here. if you want to call these questions in, they will go to the front of the line. Mm-hmm. Seat Concepts Hot Seat Hotline. And, oh, wait a minute. Before this next question, I want to bring up the Bulletproof Designs Product of the Week. Do you know what it is? Is it Tour to Crash car, crash Bars? Why would you call it a Crash Guard? I'm changing the name. Oh. So yes, uh, so my product of the week this week is the TourTech. These are crash guards, actually. So Matt is right. So these are for my Yamaha Tenere 700. Uh, if you watch my latest vlog on the Tenere, I'm looking right through the middle of this sucker right here. Uh, I tell you why I got these. I never, I rarely ever get crash guards. I want to call them tip over guards. Mm-hmm. Don't want to call them crash cars. I do not like to crash an adventure bike, but I rode mine off a cliff a few months ago. Like I thought I could. It's it's a place we ride our normal dirt normal dirt bikes. Okay. And it cuts off about like thirty miles of pavement to go this one little pass over this pass. Mm-hmm. I knew it was gnarly. I rode up there and I got there and I I should have turned around, but I said, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. But it was marbly. It's those marbly rocks on top of a super steep downhill at an off camber, and it ends. It terminates in a in a wash that's like a that's like a V. So it was like riding off a cliff. And I got eight tenths of the way down there, almost in control. Mm-hmm. And then the weight of that motorcycle, full tank of gas, of course, all this stuff, bags on it, started sliding. And then I started having to, whoa, hang on and drop off into a ditch with big boulders and bounced and saved it like 17 more times before Mm -hmm. I finally had to let it auger in. And luckily the only thing it broke was the fork protector. It it actually hit a big rock kind of in as it was stopping, Uh but it scratched the, the, the the radiator shroud, we'll call it. It actually, the windshield got scratched because the way it, you know, slid on the ground, all these things. And so I had to, buy a new fort guard which was on back order and it was pretty expensive for a small piece of plastic but hey that's that's the way it is i did something stupid i should have to pay for it 
But I started looking at the price of the radiator shroud and the radiator and all the things. Yeah, yeah. And I did the math, and this was so much less expensive than having to buy those pieces. And I know that this is Jimmy. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I should turn around, but I'm going to go for it. And then tipped over. Mm-hmm. And, and we can all have that one that just you don't expect coming and then things tip over. That's why I don't want to call it a crash. I This was a tip over, more or less. It was like a little bit of a crash, but it was more of a tip over. It wasn't like a just... Like when I rode off the top of this, I knew that it was a 17% chance of what had happened was going to happen. And it did. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I bought crash guards. I mean tip over guards. These the tour tech stuff is really solid, uh, and I got it in conjunction with the whole luggage system that I'm getting for that bike. So, they're pannier racks, the Zega Pro panniers and pannier racks, mm-hmm. which I run on all of my adventure bikes. They have some of the best, it's just high quality, best stuff. Watch my Tenere 700 vlog number six, and I'll explain it there. But, uh, that's my product of the week. Uh, okay. check out uh, tourtechusa.com. I have a and, follow-up question now that I'm looking at that. And uh, if you want to come out and visit us at the Tour Tech Rally this year in Plain, Washington, mm-hmm. um, my, Matt and myself will be teaching some classes. Yeah. You can meet Matt. He won't be working on your motorcycle, but he might be teaching <laughs> you how to ride it. I can put on a zip tie okay. if it's the right spot, though. Uh, so actually looking at that crash cart just reminded me, is Alt Rider still a thing? I haven't heard anything about him in no idea. a while. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard anything it's about him. It's been a long time since they left you out in the desert, right? Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, so Austin Coleman, who actually submitted a question before, uh, he put in earlier in the show, tried checking baseline on my four clickers on my 2019 KTM 300 XCW and tried to bottom them out. I got to 25 clicks and never hit the bottom. Am I missing something? Wow. Uh, t- so 2019, if it was all the way in screwed, you can get to 25, maybe 30. I, I don't I've never really I've never counted the full range, but I think there's there's a lot in there. Unless so is okay, so the question is this bike stock. So fork clickers. And especially if they're on top, if it's a clicker on top and not on the bottom, and now I'm thinking twenty nineteen, I don't think it has a clicker on the bottom. So many bikes, so many questions. But anyways, so if it's on top if your fork was disassembled and reassembled, if it wasn't assembled properly, for sure, you can have like infinite clicks to where it because it wasn't set, so the click, so the 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 clicker goes down and things can come apart in there. So, uh, yeah, you might be missing something. But if it's Austin, let me know if it, it has that fork been apart. If it hasn't, uh, you should only maybe thirty would be the max, but you should be able to get it to quote bottom out. But if it and I have in the past seen some WP stuff assembled improperly. So uh, I would say if if it if it is spinning too much, more than 30, uh, yeah, take it to a suspension tuner that knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely strange. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and ask the most recent question from Soupy Socks Enduro. It might be a dumb question, but is there a proper procedure when kickstarting your bike? What is the practice? Pra- best practice that one can do oh this is one i'm still still getting down kickstarting kickstarting like i'm assuming a four stroke procedure um, proper procedure top dead center and no so kick. so no this isn't a dumb question so, no no um, it's not a dumb one at all no this I, is one you had to teach me multiple times right and most people i can kickstart almost any bike and it's just it's experience and learning and stuff like this so yeah two stroke and four stroke are a little bit different but what i like to do is i like to get if i'm going to kickstart a bike i like to get it near or just past top dead center. Two strokes, I like to get it just near top dead center. Um, four strokes, I like to get it just past top dead center. And here's the here's the thing. Here's the secret. At that point, let the Kickstarter ratchet all the way back up. Because you want as much of a long throw as you can get on the Kickstarter. So let it come all the way back up because I see a lot of people find it and their Kickstarter is a quarter of the way down and they only get three quarters of a kick. They don't get a full kick. So get that thing where you want it. Every bike's a little bit different. So you're going to, you're going to, as you experience, it's like some four strokes, you go past top dead center and then another half stroke down and then pull it all the way back up. Because you think about it, that's the power stroke and 
you want to flop over and then go to the intake stroke. It, it's, but anyhow, too technical. So you just got to find out where it's at, full stroke, and then you want to do a nice, big, smooth stroke of the Kickstarter. And, you know, run it all the way through till it bottoms. But you don't want to have all your weight on it so when it finally gets to the end, that's when all your weight slams into the foot peg frame, Kickstarter, whatever it is. You kind of want to use all of your weight in the middle of the stroke. So you pick yourself up and let yourself fall onto the Kickstarter. This is like a balance thing on the, that we teach in the class. Even if you have a 2002 Husaberg that has mm -hmm. a Kickstarter on the left-hand side, this technique works. And if you have an electric start as well as a Kickstarter, you can actually amplify. Kick lecture. Kick lecture. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can so you get set the same thing, and right when you start putting your weight down, you push on the starter. And so if your battery's halfway dead, you can do oh, this. Oh, you do it at the end. Oh, of your kick. Of your I, kick I, I do. Stroke? I do it at the same time. The minute I the minute I put okay. my weight on it, then I put the electric okay. down. Then then I okay. I was like, oh wait, maybe this is why I sometimes struggle. But no, it's no. kind of it's the same time. I don't think there's an ideal time. Yeah, because I've always thought it it kind of helps. It amplifies your your kick versus I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Facebook user is it, what's better to use for fuel pump lines in the tank, Oteker style. In the tank, or or so, or in the tank style clamps, um, or Tinker. I you know, so I'm not super familiar with that, that technology. But there's a there's these clamps that, uh, they they're one time use, and they pinch down with a. It's a special tool you're supposed to use, but it's a, essentially like a set of dikes, but squared up, and your set of dikes compress these things down so somebody that probably knows a little bit more about the names of those things basically the ones that are stock are the best ones to use inside of the tank uh, outside of the tank i prefer something that that attaches with a, a threaded you know so uh, just like a typical hose clamp style so you can use a either a flat bladed or phillips head screw on the hose clamp because if you ever need to take that off or remove it, it's easy. But inside the tank, you shouldn't be jacking with that thing. Uh, just get it and make it happen. Okay. Roy15 asked uh, about 30 minutes ago, do you think riding every other day is better than going to the gym? Roy. Did I say like, Roy? Like, uh, like one of those things is the hurt factory and the other one is fun. So let me be perfectly, absolutely 100% clear. Riding every day is more fun than going to the gym. Unless you have super hot babes in your gym that you're checking out and thinking about riding them. <laughs> I mean, wait, no, riding your motorcycle while you're working out. If you're working out and thinking about riding your motorcycle, it's okay to go to the gym. Otherwise, just ride your motorcycle. All right. Okay. Yeah, or, 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 or ticker are pex clamps. Yeah. Okay. So that's the same thing. Uh, I don't know. There's, you can buy a hundred different kinds of those clamps on Amazon <laughs> and different things, but if you get the right ones, those clamps are uh, the best ones. So thanks, TW. <laughs> CB Socks Enduro. My motto was, "Who needs a gym membership when you can get a dumb idea on a dirt bike?" Uh, the, I guess you could. I think. I think. I, I think the thing is that, that the gym is. Like any sort of like training, you're 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 actually at that point you're kind of doing pure training. You know, you're going mm -hmm. to the gym and you're doing a set number of reps on a certain machine, and it and you you can wait and and uh, analyze what you've done and see progress. Mm -hmm. Where on dirt bike riding, your goal should be to le use less energy. Yeah, yeah, but you're, you're sitting there going, like, how do I feel like I did something? You can wear one of these watches that shows your heart rate and different things, and you mm -hmm. can, you know, time yourself on certain things and do better this way. The problem with, like, practicing on the dirt bike, there's a point where you get to, and this is, the, this is probably my life more than anything else. If I start riding at a level on a dirt bike to where I'm getting a good workout, I'm endangering myself from losing traction and crashing. You know, I start riding or, or, you know, I'm going fast enough or something where I'm going to hit something that I don't see a rock or a rut or whatever. 
So the gym is for the most part pretty safe. And the motorcycle riding at, you know, pushing at a certain level can be to a certain amount dangerous. But you can practice safe things. You can do figure eights, you can do circles, you can ride flat track, although flat track can get kind of crazy too, because you get little confidence behind you and you, mm-hmm. you're like I was say, flat, flat track, my legs get more tired than anywhere else. Besides well, except if I go running ten miles, but on the flat track my legs get tired. You should ride ruts. Like ride in ruts, like in, in. What about if you do figure eight? Do your legs get tired there? No, 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 not on the figure what eight. What gets tired in figure eight? Uh, I'd say my arms first, more specifically, kind of like my shoulders and my chest, just because my bad habit when I'm really practicing, it's when I'm to, trying to push my level, is I tense up it. on the handlebars. Yeah, yeah. And on the flat track, I'm so focused on getting my weight on the outside peg that I'm almost doing like a squat. Yeah, um, I, I might. So it's like it's the inside leg that hurts because I'm always because mm-hmm. you're always like you're hovering. You're ho- it's hovering all the time. Yeah, yeah. My inside leg hurts, but then my outside leg will hurt too. Like my outside knee today was actually because I was playing around with different foot positions today. That was the thing I was really working on, and I was actually my outside knee was starting to give me some uh, some. It didn't like the angle I was pushing down on the outside peg. Yeah, interesting. Hey. Uh, anybody notice my Tech Talk Taco Tuesday t-shirt? The one from Jerry Bernardo? That's just from Jerry Bernardo. So we're I think we're going with gray because we have white ones. Mm-hmm. And those are going to be limited edition collector items. Mark Daniels. Mucho Grande. And uh, if it gets in the mail because the post office here is so sketchy. This black one is just for me. So we're going to go in between. We're going to go gray, I think. Perfect. We're going to go with the gray one. So in the next couple of shows, we're going to finalize something. We're going to get some samples in here. We're going to preview it, and then we're going to have like a pre-order thing. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to make millions being a T-shirt company. Screw mm-hmm. all this motorcycle question answering stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? All you have to do is you have to come here. Actually, can your girlfriend send them out when she moves to Prump? she can be a T-shirt <laughs> hucker? I don't know if she's moving to Prump. Okay. Just checking. Uh, yeah, Victor, black black ones. This is like once you go black, you can't come back. That's what I always say about my t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, your grinder too. <laughs> I say that on grinder. Uh, I you make you say that, that on grinder. <laughs> okay, are we ready for Rooster Endo? Hey, everybody's favorite seg- segment. This is Taco Moto sponsored. TacoMoto.co. They have everything you need for almost any bike you have. And they have cool stickers, by the way. So this is the Rooster Endo segment. And what this does is makes me happy when you send us good photos of your bike with a description. Here's the rules. Year, make, and model. Because I hate guessing. Year, make, and model. And then tell us what you did to it in your own words. And then we will talk about it a little bit. Hopefully it provides us with some enjoyment. And whichever one gives me the most enjoyment, and maybe Matt too, we'll give you a $100 gift certificate from tacomoto.co. So Mark Daniels is back. He's no longer a Facebook user. Mark, it's mucho grande, like XL, correct? Muy grande. Muy grande. Okay. All right. So let's move into this. So Brendan Springer Davis is the first one with the 2013 KTM 500 XCW. Most modifications were installed by the previous owner, so they installed sick-ass racing hand guards with turn indicators, sick-ass mirror, polysport plastic front rotor guard, Jimmy approved, and a friend bent his on a rocky section of a trail. So we have evidence of... Front, he has a front disc rotor. Yeah, he, his with, friend has a bent, bent has a bent front disc rotor. Oh, send me the picture. I've never seen one before. Mm-hmm. I've seen him scratched up to hell but never bent. <laughs> okay. So let's go down to the rest. He also threw in a little story, but this is it's mods. It's long. Yeah, mods. So trail rack from KTM Twins. Can't remember the brand. Promoto billet pegs and kickstands. Scott steering stabilizer. ODI Rogue lock-on grips. FMF exhaust. Tusk shifter and tube bag. A chair... Be- uh. A Serbis. <laughs> okay. He spelled out A chair, chair B's. B's. So swing arm guards. Well, you probably thought Logan was going to read it. Probably. Eagle, itch is this. 
or or titty tail. Enduro engineering skid plate and radiator guards. Okay, Mark, I got you. Grande, large. Got it. Not an XL. Well, are we sure he's not asking for a Starbucks order if he's saying grande? I don't know. So $29 cheap Charlie China uh, China knockoff bars. Absolutely love this bike and agree with Jimmy. 500s are badass. Why don't you have Fast Company Flex handlebars in that thing? Okay. So if this guy wins, he has to buy some Flex handlebars. Yeah. Cheap Chinese bars. This is... Okay. This is scary. Because there's certain things that you put a lot of faith in, mm-hmm. like handlebars. Yes. And there's certain things I wouldn't buy off of. I mean, if it's just an exhaust pipe, okay, I'll buy it off of the, you know, Alibaba or whatever, <laughs> you know. But okay, uh, I'm, I'm. This looks like a photo we might have shot today, which horrifies me. He's got a tree coming out of his handlebar. He's up above the bike. You know, my good buddy Drew would be just shaking in his shoes. Uh, it looks like a nice place to ride. I'd like to ride right up that ledge in so front of him. That, yeah, just, that ledge is placed perfectly. You just do a double blip, right? Just double blip. We it. teach that in the school. I think that that ledge is just a tad a above blip my or ability. A double blip. I don't know. It just kind of yeah. depends on how you do it. Just twist the throttle but and see what happens. What type of tires does he have on it? And then what if about my Chinese handlebars are going to snap when well, I finally do? do it right the tires do almost look like the at 81s okay i'm um, not 100% sure the dirt looks wet i like that that's roosting has a lot of stuff on it um push. i'm not super stoked on this one for some reason it's not giving me good vibes what about you matt um i'm stoked on the background of the picture but the tree is very oddly placed. Yeah, it's coming out like, of that. It's like there's a lot of picture here and not a lot of bike. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, I like I like picture that shows where you're at and but, stuff. Like this is a good cover photo for Facebook, but this isn't a good profile picture. Cover photo? You mean on the top? Of the, across yeah. the top of the slide. Across the top. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Oh, there's see. a little bit of foreground here at the edge. A little bit of foreground right here at the very edge. No, what about if the bike were up on the ledge, though? I'd put it up on the ledge yeah, and then yeah. shoot up at it a little bit more, and then you could catch the, the scenic background with mm-hmm. some stuff. But There's a part of me that wanted you to just park the bike on one of those ledges, and then we just kind of be like, whoa, look at the picture. Just kind of like fake it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this soft endo, I could be talking to a roost. Cause... Well, if you put it up on there, if you put it up there and tried to ride it off, for sure he would endo, so I'm going to go with endo. Okay. That's why it's not up there. Got it. Got it. So next up is going to be from Tim Skelly. I know Tim. Yeah, he's been active in the chat tonight, too. Oh, because he, he's got his bike in there. Yeah. And by the way, just to prove, he cut off the front wheel on the photo, not me. Okay. Just so you know. Got like it. I'm showing it right there. Tim's bike looks like it's in pea gravel. It does. P gravel. All right. This is 2008 KTM 300 XC. Bought it brand new in 2008 with lots of mods over the years. SX head and CDI box. Oval board carburetor with approximately 38 millimeters. Electric start kit added as this was the only year that came without but was able to be added. Pro circuit pipe. uh, Pro circuit platinum pipe with shorty silencer. Engine completely rebuilt approximately 100 hours ago. Total hours is around 700. Scott stabilizer, BRP, triple clamps, Psychray hand guards mounted to triple clamps with threaded inserts in the bars, Baja design squadron headlight, XCW tail light, IMS 3.8 gallon tank with the BRP billet gas cap, KTM, radi- KTM radiator guards, Samco silicone hoses with Evans coolant, TM design work skid plate, Scott shark fin, BDP front disc guard it's plenty scratched up so it's done something for me jimmy <laughs> iron man rear sprocket oh, are we on are we on discard alert tonight do i, I guess so do, i guess so and like no sharp objects objects <laughs> around me uh tmd uh chain guide with bulletproof design swing arm guard seat concepts tall seat with pseudo cover or suede cover suspension tuned by inside line moto grip warmers tubeless front and rear giant loop mojave saddlebags the old dog rips love the show guys keep up the good work okay so matt i want you to take a good close look at this bike does it remind you of anything 
Uh, reminds me a lot of my Hoosberg. Exactly. Because this is my Hoosberg, essentially. That's, that's your Hoosberg, except it's the KTM version of the Hoosberg. Yeah. Uh, and it was funny because this is right before they figured out how to make the PDS work. So mm-hmm. that's when the shock is mounted right to the backbone of the frame. Yeah. And then, and I remember because we did a big test where the, was yours 2008 or 2009? Wait, my Hoosberg? Yeah. Mine's a 12. It was a 12. Yeah, so it came and with it was, the electric but it was start. Still, it was still with this frame. Yes. So KTM figured out that they could isolate that frame. So this bike is one generation back. So like like when Brenda's bike is 20 generations back, this mm-hmm. is like one back from the, you know, it's actually probably three two, or four. I was really. going to say, isn't it two or three? Yeah, it's a lot. But uh, they he's done a lot of cool stuff to that bike. And I know Inside Live Moto, which is his, he works, he works there. It's his, uh, him and his buddy run this place. They own this place. They know how to keep things running. And this is a perfect example of that. I'm sure this bike works pretty darn good because mm-hmm. they have a lot of uh, experience and, and uh, kind of tuning it. Other than the discard, which is like, you know, I'm, I'm literally, Glad there's no sharp objects near me right now. Like I'm trying to stab myself. I think this bike roosts. It's a hard roost, mo- only because you see your Husaberg in this. Well, okay. There's two reasons now, <laughs> but 700 hours on the bike and still keeping it looking that clean. Yeah, it looks that's, cherry. That that is awesome. That this Tim loves this bike. Takes good care of it. Unlike I did in my Husaberg. It, it might be for sale. <laughs> Oh, shit. I don't know. I didn't. Is it is it going for sale tomorrow? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But this 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 thing's awesome. This, this one's roosts. I I love hearing when bikes have a lot of hours and they look mm-hmm. this good. Yeah, I I think it roosts. I'm liking it. All right. So up next is going to be a Mike uh, Ethel. Okay. How did this segment ever take off like this? I just said we should copy Top Gear, and so, you said yeah. Does Top Gear let readers submit their cars? No. Well, then why are we copying Top Gear? We're at. We're this made is this our is own. copying. This is copying Dirt Wheels magazine. Oh. It was Dirt Wheels magazine that used to have like reader rides. Mm. This is where we came up with this whole thing. So I thought yeah, Dirt Rider Top also Gear. had something like this. No, we didn't do this. Oh, we should okay. have. It was a big hit. It, it's yeah. a big hit. I'm. I'm I enjoy it. I I really do. I mean, I like to see what other people are riding. I like to see how they explain stuff. I, I'm I'm genuinely. I I learn every time something about these different bikes. Right. I liked it when we printed them out and put them on a board, but we don't have a little young child labor to do this stuff anymore. No, no. Actually, text Logan, get him to call in. I got some <laughs> questions for him. So okay, read it off. All right. So Mike Ethel. 20- oh wait, hold on, hold the presses. Tim Skelly says, possibly for sale soon because I want a TBI 300 XCW in 24. Oh, you've been hearing the rumors. Mm-hmm. I already have two buddies that have dibs on it when I'm ready to sell. Oh, okay, so it's not really for sale. Hey, yeah. but Tim, let, let me tell you, I have some KTM 525s that I'm looking to off. So if you know anybody who wants those, they're super good motorcycles that run, but they don't look very nice. Okay, keep going. Okay. 2022 500 EXEF, D smog fuel torque ECU remap, a T Nick suspension upgrade, OEM exhaust mod, bullet, uh, sorry, billet triple clamps, uh, Bark Busters, P3 carbon gu- pipe guard, IMS 17 liter fuel tank, Renthal sprockets, Renthal chain, RHX axle blocks, AXP bash plate, domino start stop switch, Moto 3D headlight, sticker kit, or a race tech. Or Artec white plastic kit, Renthal grip donuts, a Cherby's bar bag, Kriga hull loop, cooling fan, override switch, and I think that's it. Let me, it looks like the th- it, it looks like the list got cut off, but I don't know if that was me or him. Uh, so that bike looks really clean. Really clean. Really clean. I'm gonna assume he's not from the states if he's using 17 liter tank. Oh. Uh, foreigner, eh? Well, uh, and uh, we do have a presence in Australia, and there was a lot of brands that I didn't recognize. No, and that's actually like my favorite part about the the segment is seeing when we get the foreign 
submissions, yeah, and it's things. brands I never hear about. So the cool thing is he's taken this KTM, which used to be an orange thing, and turned it into... It looks like a great white shark. That's what I, I see when I see it. Yeah, a great white shark. I mean, his yeah. graphics are clean. I Just the fact that he started, you know, it says a black frame, and then he's gone black and blue on his color. It It's kind of like, it looks a little bit like Husky, but a little bit like Yamaha. It's just so in between. It's this, this it's transitioned. Mm-hmm into a whole new thing whatever it is uh, i like it um it's really good i think i think the bike looks clean this might be my favorite looking 500 exc we've seen really yeah i'm going that far like i really like that graphics kit that that it has my favorite color which is this kind of like navy darkish blue on the white and then the black frame but right. it doesn't have the weird looking husky plastics no yeah it's like when they go to husky when the husky they look different and then plus he's got pds which is the you know, like I like it. I'm one of like seven people in the whole world that like PDS. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and Tim mentions that the location, location, it's shot in his yard. But his yard That's looks That's a hell nice. of a big yard. Yeah, his yard looks, no, it's, it, it, is, it is his yard. I mean, you know, we don't all live in some like condo complex in Las Vegas, Matt. I know, I know. Some, some people are spread out over acres. Yeah, just over the like hill. my parents. I grew yeah. up over Acres. Right. Yeah. I used to have a turn track in my yard. Yeah. So roost graphics are rocking it. Mark Daniels likes this. Yeah, th- I th- like this. This is a roost. Hey, hey, Tim. Uh, even though it's shot in his yard, sometimes you can overcome, like the fact that he just rolled it out of his garage and shot a picture of it. But he he gave us a complete list. His mm-hmm. photo's not bad. It's not hokey tokey lighting. I think most of the stuff's in there. I like the bike. Not not necessarily you know tight with all of our sponsors, but then again, that doesn't matter. Okay, I like it. Roost. A hard roost. Hard, hard roost. roost. Yeah. Okay, so up next is going to be a Mark Allen, and now I will give Mark some credit. He submitted this photo first, and I typically go with the I typically go with the first photo you submit. He did send in a picture that with this pretty bike. Pretty stinking blown out. He sent a picture of this bike with. It was a better picture, but okay. also okay. with dirt wheels. Like, so that bike has reams on it. Like, it's mm-hmm. got some rims. Some hot spots. Yeah, like the reams are pretty hot. <laughs> if you're into rims, it's got some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And the, the, the tire disappears, too. But let me see here. Pro Taper, Cycro Flat, uh, Pro Taper, Cycro Are we going to get flats. the other photo? Oh, here. Let me get the other photo for you. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not. Like, I don't care what he did, but the numbers, like, S, S upside down L, I think it's supposed to be 57. <laughs> it's just not, mm-hmm. it's not happening. Matt's over there feverishly clicking buttons while I'm looking for another beer. <laughs> Actually, I'll just have another tequila. Here we go. It's that time of night. So, uh, oh, is Mark in the chat? He is. And he's he's defending himself. Wow. So I think uh, in the chat, you and Tim, Tim and Mark, you guys need to have it out with each other to figure out which one of you guys survives. It's survivor of the chat. Okay. Oh, the bike's outside here. There we go. Yeah. Orange. Orange. Uh, he's got a lot of orange. I like the fact that it turns into a dirt bike. That really helps me out with mm-hmm. you know my state of being. We didn't get a year maker model though. Hey, uh, <laughs> Mark's on break at work, by the way. <laughs> uh, he wins because he's a rebel. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Well, Mark, you better put in the year make and model oh, quickly. Oh, he, d- he left the year make and model. Just out. the mods, just the mods. So I'll read off the Hold mods. Hold on, let, we'll me, for let, that. Me, let me go for year make and model. Uh, zoom in on that thing. Bring that in a little closer. Oh boy, I have to look at the tank and the shrouds and stuff like that. 2016 KTM 500 EXE. 2015 500 EXE. Uh, how close was that? That was pretty good. You're close. You're close. Yeah, not bad. Uh, the okay. front fender would have made me some said something newer, but okay. So Pro Taper, Cycro, Pro Taper, just says Pro Taper, uh, Cycro flags, bulletproof, cl- uh, bulletproof designs, clever. You know, Pro Taper uh, makes covers. a lot of things. They make sprockets. Um, 
Oh, this explains the and the handlebars. Fender. Yeah, but but they make some other Polysport restyle kit. That okay. explains why the front fender would throw me off. Okay. LED headlight, uh, SK, SKDA uh, graphics, sk- Skida. I don't know how to pronounce that company. FMF Q4, FMF Mega Bomb. Are you channeling your inner Logan? Logan? Yeah. yeah. Good. Shock zone suspension, Warp 9 Elites, uh, Metzler K1, Fresh Top End, IMS 2, uh, 3.2, Taco 90 Degrees, a Gulen Filter, Attack Frame Guards, Boyson Cover slash Super Cooler. Uh, let's see. He added a couple other things here. Um, this bike was blown oh. up for two years in a chicken coop before he had purchased it. So he yeah. rebuilt this bike. How did you get this message? Like in a in a in a grinder chat or something? No. The F the F E E X E group. How, how many I, po- I post there too, whenever and, we need and how, many, submissions. how many posts did he make to get you the information on this? Uh the initial post was pretty much all the stuff. Uh, the second post he had a picture of this bike. Let's say over the spanned over three posts. Three posts. Yeah. So that's like three submissions. <laughs> he, he's overdoing it let's see but he's in the chat and he's he's re-explaining a lot of his parts and uh <laughs> oh boy uh and tim and mark are going at it <laughs> in the chat trying yeah, to say, yeah. if i didn't see the first photo i would go roost i don't i don't know why i i have but but i have a counterpoint the fact that this bike like lurks in the backgrounds in the darkness as a supermoto bike it, it kind of scares me i think he bought it as a supermoto bike and then fixed it up oh he did i think you think uh, they, this could be wrong he could have explained it in this story well about, this could be about wrong his bike he I, found it in a chi- so so that bike was hanging out as a supermoto bike in a chicken coop and then when it came out in public it dresses like a dirt bike it is a dirt bike now yes but what do you think it does when he puts it back in the chicken coop well, I don't know. He bought it from the chicken coop, so I don't know if he's actually storing it in a chicken okay, coop. Okay, so when he takes it back and he puts it in the garage, what do you think the bike does? Does it get supermoto wheels back on it, or mm. does it does it stay as a dirt bike? I don't think so. These are the kind of questions that we need to know. <laughs> he's, 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 he's searching for extra credit here. <laughs> no. I run the white Sumo Elites on my Husky, too. Oh, so he's a, has he submitted more than one bike? No. No, just yeah, this that. one. Okay. Got it. Uh, I'm going to go with the bike that's outside is a roost. The bike in the chicken coop is an endo. So he's he's bordering between those two things. This bike roosts for me because these look like Duct tape. electrical tape. Electrical tape number numbers. Plate numbers. And it's, those always do, do. It's S upside down L. Yep. Yeah. Hey, it's You got you to embrace when you have to use electrical tape. Just embrace it. You okay. should embrace it when you have to wrap wires with electrical tape. <laughs> okay, so this last one is going to be Tyler Wallace, pretty sure. Okay. Let me count my... Yes, that should be it. Okay. It's supposed to be more professional, this, Matt. Well, I threw off my count. Did we do four or five bikes? So is this the fifth or the fourth bike? Well, it's got a rainbow in it, Okay. Okay, don't be and too a, don't be a, too offended by the rainbow. And a discard that's don't like, be a snowflake about the rainbow. Okay, Tyler Wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I, no, it's a real freaking rainbow. That's yeah. a genuine. That's not saying anything about anything else. So just yeah. lay off there. That, but that discard <laughs> is flaunting. Oh, the, it's, it's it's blown out too. Uh, it, it's not only blown out; it's in my face. It's, it's and I, I'm imagining. You see, the rainbow has the arc that's going across there. And yeah. The, and the the discard is the anti arc. Like I want to look at the rainbow, like it's but you a cool photo, but then it's just blown out. You can't even look at it. So yeah. if you're if you're wondering what's going on here, we have a picture of what's what's his what's the name again? This is Tyler Wallace. Tyler Wallace. That looks that looks really close to here, doesn't it? That looks. That like, looks like where we just like rode the today. Valley. Yeah, yeah. That li- literally looks like. Except our photos look like crap because the sun was up straight over our head. Yeah. Well, he's, he's th- got this some is angle to it. I mean, the fact that he took that in the afternoon, he's getting that rainbow and that light on that thing, and his kickstand's like punji sticking into the ground. And the bike's leaning over too far, and like I would, 
cringe if I saw somebody setting up to shoot that photo right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd almost think I was an art director, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the real 100% straight rainbow in the background is dang good shot, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a straight it's like a solid shot. That's a solid shot. Like the timing on that? It's just... It's pure yeah. luck. That that eh. You know, sometimes you just got to be a lucky duck. Yeah. This right. The the, your, the rear desk rotor. It's not that it's the rear desk rotor. It's that it's, it's you glaring at you us. You can't see this in the chat, but like, Matt's like, little mouse finger is just squirreling over. I mean, I mean, it's so bright in this photo that search and rescue would probably land in front of you, thinking, "Oh, yeah. did you just <laughs> did you just crash?" <laughs> Asher oh Tiro, God. Asher Lito says. The picture kind of sucks, but the rainbow is pretty sick. It is pretty sick. Yeah. What about the bike? Let's hear about it, Matt. Like we've got twenty twenty Husqvarna FX four fifty. Okay, he he just did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. You're making model. model. You're making model. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have to guess. Six speed conversion, KYB SSS conversion, uh, full system FMF, GPR stabilizer, IMS tank with dry brake, flex bars, disc brake protection, enduro engineering, moose bibs. Sure, he's forgetting a lot. He says he's sure he's forgetting a lot? Like the skid plate. Enduro engineering. No, disc brake oh. protection is from enduro engineering. Zoom in on that skid plate. I haven't seen it. Looks it looks custom made. I haven't seen a, a new enduro engineering skid plate lately. That thing is. That looks pretty burly. Look at that. Thing. That looks, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it has extra protection on it. Yeah, it does. What tires are you running? Is that a AT81 on the back? No. Or is that, it a Kenda Parker? That look, or no, Kenda Equilibrium. That looks like an Equilibrium to it me. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I can't see his front tire because that disc, that there's so much glare off I the should, front I, disc guard. It, that's, it, not, that's not it, glare. It's that's, such... that's flare. Wait, uh, let's see the tire. Like, I think there's a logo on the bottom down. No, it wasn't. It was I, just I, flare. I, I'm just being blinded by this. <laughs> I'm just being blinded. Oh, oh boy. My. Oh, Lord. Uh, you know what? I'm just going. <laughs> it, it 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 endos for me because when I'm taking a picture, I look to see if there's anything like this, and oh, then I ju- kind of move around. I'll judge you. I'll judge you for every photo that you shot today. Yeah, because you just said that. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I'm going with I, hey, roost. I, I lucked just, out. I had a just on, the, just on the lucky duck, and the fact that if you wanted to, if you wanted to lose this contest. You would send me a picture of a front disc rotor, yeah, that just it was shoved in my face, and this guy just shoved this disc rotor in my face in front of a rainbow and said, "F you, Jimmy and Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. This is I'm doing it my way." Right. Yeah. Okay. So is that yeah. it? That is it. That is all. That one wins. It wins for you. Yeah. 100%. It 100% wins just because he had the balls to do that. Even if even if he didn't know, that just means he was triple lucky on that whole thing. I mean, in, in the rainbow, catching it in the arc of the rainbow is a pretty sick yeah. idea. Uh, I disagree. That that is glare is a glaring issue for me. I can't get over it. It's a glaring issue, but it's it, literally glaring. It glares to win. Yeah, yeah. For me, my my, my pick was Mike uh, Ethel, just because. I, I, yeah, I like Mike's bike. It's all yeah. good. That's not, nothing. It's pretty standard. And I'm gonna go with Tim on that. He just shot it in his backyard. Okay, mm-hmm. Tim's bike is really nice. I know it reminds you of Husaberg, but like, if you want to just shove it down my throat, uh, what's his name? Tyler. Tyler just did. Yeah, he just. <laughs> Like that was so good. That was so. <laughs> he, good. That, he, he did the equivalent of putting like, uh, I don't know how to say this in a less in a more elegant way, but okay. he just essentially put his balls on his handlebars and just roved in for like the win. That's, that's true. What he just yeah, did. yeah, yeah. With a with it, but he put his balls on his front discard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or his focus point on his front discard and yeah. blew it out. So yeah, Tyler, you win. Good job, Tyler <laughs> Wallace. Good. Go ahead. And, Reach out to me, Matt at Jimmy Lewis Off Road. You never know what we're gonna pick here on Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. Even when it's the one. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's it's all good times. I will say it's not the the worst photo that was submitted today. Hey, though. Mark, I'm disqualifying your opinion, but I will send your T-shirt out large. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, hey, 
uh, I think that's it. Do we have any other questions? Anything else I think that's all we got going. That's all we got going. Hey, but somebody said something about Sierra 450S X versus RX versus KX 450X. Oh yeah, that was a interesting little comment there. Neither so Thorn Stormcaller had put in neither because they aren't two strokes. They summed it up for there. They just summed it up for you. Well, he's saying which one's better. I mean, that's the question we're asking those two. Yeah. How do they compare? And he says neither because they aren't two strokes. There, he summed it up for you. Well, Thorin Jing Stormcaller. I'm sure that's his real name, Stormcaller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a Viking. Yeah, he's probably a Viking. And Vikings should ride two strokes. If you don't have a KTM 550 MXC, you're a pussy. <laughs> Just like this, <laughs> throw that straight out. What about uh, our KLX? KLR what, what, 650 review. Uh, stock tire. What are the stock tires on those uh, six KLR 650s? Are you they know, the same ones from like years ago? So our our bike came with the uh, Dunlop D606s, which are great tires, by the way, mm-hmm. for that KLR 650. I don't know what comes on at stock because our bike did not come stock because we're dirt bike test and they know we're not going to ride it on the street that much. Their, their, their stock selection is probably better for the street. Mm-hmm. The amazing thing, and this is something I'm, I just would like to just – lay out there is that the manufacturer has a really complete spec sheet on their website that tells you all this information so don't ask me what they put on their motorcycle that's not my job Mm -hmm. you should go to their website and ask them because it's there already and i can't memorize every tire on every bike but i know what our bike came with because i know what i was riding Mm. i remember a lot of people actually liked those tires just because how cheap they were (laughs) The which ones? The, the KLR stock, stock ones. What they're, they're, they? like a, they're like a fifty fifty. It wasn't they're, so they're not knobbies. So Kenda makes Kenda makes a, a Trackmaster or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if those tires came on some of those bikes, but there was also a Ching Shin mm-hmm. uh tire that came on some of those bikes. Okay. Well let's move on to all wheel drive adventure. We're still getting comments on this video from the all wheel drive adventure bike. So Paul Mechanic was asking uh, is this applicable to Honda CRF uh, or a 1100L Africa Twin or a Yamaha T7? Just once. So the the all wheel drive concept can work on any bike, and the funny thing is the front end is a kind of a standard thing. Christine makes a triple clamp and and all the parts that go on to this, but it's getting the power from the counter shaft sprocket up to that point into the headset is the difficult thing. So it's not applicable. It could it work? Yes. If there was ever a technology that I think that we've missed out on or overlooked is all-wheel drive adventure bikes. And I'm not talking full-time all-wheel drive. I'm talking about just like your four-wheel drive truck, you use it when you need it. And it's amazing. Like you can get unstuck and it can get you out of tr- tricky situations. If you're driving on certain type of traction situations, just like in four-wheel drive, it's a lot better being in a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive situation. The same goes for motorcycles and especially on adventure bikes. I'm really, really disappointed that that technology did not ever get adopted or take off. So, mm-hmm. uh, And the, the interesting thing is it, I'm sure it would cost manufacturers a certain amount of money, but if it were rolled into a large-scale production, or we'll call it medium-scale production, it would have taken off and it would have been game changing. I've ridden one and I've ridden a lot of bikes and it just makes, especially adventure bikes. I, I like them on, on regular bikes. I, I enjoy riding my Christini regular dirt bike. I don't need it, but I enjoy riding because it, it does certain things better. Mm-hmm. Adventure bikes, game changing, period. Next question. All right, so Ben was saying on the Beta 200 review, that spooge is not oil. It's just too much fuel. Jet it correctly like I did, and that goes away. JD jetting is the path that they went, or he went. Okay. He's talking about it. So we had a little spooge. He probably didn't ride on the super gnarly, technical, tight trails that I did for long periods of time mm-hmm. where I was never, never able to open it up. Are we getting another one of those anytime soon? Uh, Rodney Smith called up and want to know what kind of beta we're looking for to test next. But I, we've already done the 200. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's changed much since we're probably going to go with something a little bit more four stroke. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we, I didn't, 
I, I didn't want to change the jetting because we were out here running it like wide open, like high speed stuff, but then also doing gnarly trails back mm-hmm. and forth and back and forth. And I think the spooge actually came from when we were up, up in the mountains, you know, at six, seven, eight thousand feet. And there's no way I'm going to change. And this is the problem with jetting and carburetors It's like, you have to change it. If I wanted to run perfect down here in the sand tracks and stuff that we ride or a high speed desert mm-hmm. and then go up. 4,000, 5,000 feet, and I'm going to suffer at one place or the other. I'd rather suffer at the high altitude Mm -hmm. with a little bit rich than suffer down here with the bike being too lean and having a problem. Rich is better than lean. And guess what? I didn't foul a spark plug. So with that, Chris Smith. If you have a choice, would like to see a test on the Beta 480 Race Edition. Uh, Chris, that's the one that keeps popping up. So uh, I, I would like to try that one as well. So maybe you're going to get lucky. So uh, what's a question right above that? Do you think Kawasaki will bring back the KLX 650 since since they updated the KLR, or is this just wishful thinking? Such wishful thinking. thinking. <laughs> the, K, the, the KLX was a totally different bike. It was supposed to compete with XR650. And... In some ways, it actually might have been better. It was a good bike, mm-hmm. but it it didn't. The KLR is a just a street touring dual sport adventure thing, and they're they're they don't even they're not even the same in the same atmosphere mm-hmm. at that point. So no, Kawasaki's not going to bring that thing back. All right, and Brendan Spring, Springer Davis asked, "What's the deal with DOT tires?" Will number tires handle the pavement as long as you have some decent throttle control? So, Brendan, I'll tell you with 100% certainty that DOT tires, the stamp on the side of the tire, has nothing to do with the tread that you're seeing and how how they work on pavement. It's a, it's a certification, and I don't even know the specifics of it, but I run Kenda Parker DTs and Kenda Equilibriums on my bikes all the time that I'm riding on the street. And I ride them at 70 miles an hour when we're just on open roads, highways, whatever, just cruising along. And then I run them around town and whatever. I have no problem running. It's funny because I ran in a few years ago. I ran into some kids that were riding up on the on the side of the road. They were doing. They were just hauling ass down the side of the road. I'm like, dude, quit making dust. People don't like this. Just ride on the pavement. And like, it's gonna wear my tires out. I'm like, you're an idiot. Ride a little slower. You you can ride for hundreds of miles, and you're not gonna wear your knobs out riding on the pavement if you're not spinning the tire or being aggressive with it. So, take that for what it's worth. The DOT, like DOT quote knobbies work just fine for getting you from point A to point B. They're not going to be a performance tire on road, but they're not going to like wear out. Certain ones, if you run them at high speed for long periods of time, can shed knobs, but a decent tire doesn't do this. So, okay, that's it. That's pretty much it for the sheet. So, Okay, we've answered all your questions. We've had a successful night here on Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. Had some calls on the Hot Seat Hotline. Hot Seat Hotline was going off tonight. I had a good day. I rode motorcycles, and then I rode motorcycles. Mm-hmm. And then once more, I did a show. There and we go. Uh, I'm happy that everybody's joined in. Thank you for joining in. Tell a friend. Share. Click through our links. And Matt's about ready to fall asleep. But with that, we will 